It's time for Twit. John C. Dvorak, Rafe Needleman, and Doc Searles and I will talk about brand new Windows 8. Is it an unmitigated disaster? Let's find out next on Twit. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for This Week in Tech is provided by the new Winamp for Android, featuring wireless sync and one-click iTunes import. Now with free daily music downloads and full-length CD listening parties. Download it for free at winamp.com slash Android. Video bandwidth for Twit is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twit, This Week in Tech, episode 356, recorded June 3rd, 2012, the fifth leg of the stool. This Week in Tech is brought to you by Go to My PC. Access your work computer from anywhere with Go to My PC from Citrix. Go to My PC lets you connect directly to your office Mac or PC from anywhere, including your iPad and iPhone. Sign up for your free 30 day trial today at gotomypc.com. Use the offer code TWIT. And by Gazelle, the easy way to sell your iPhone, iPad, iPod, or Android smartphones from your home or office so you can get the latest versions. Get a risk free quote good for 30 days at gazelle.com. And by stamps.com. Use Stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage, the instant you need it, right from your desk. To get my special offer, go to Stamps.com now, click the radio microphone, and use the offer code TWIT. And buy Audible.com. Sign up for the Platinum Plan and get two free books. Visit Audible.com slash TWIT2. And don't forget to follow Audible on Twitter. User ID Audible underscore com. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech This Week. A great panel to discuss the uh, news of the day, starting with John C. Dvorak, who is in an unusually feisty mood despite lacking the Beach Boys shirt. Ah, yes, I know. Well, I was well, expecting to pick one up while I was here. Oh, yes. Somebody had promised me one. Oh, really? Oh, I was going <laughs> to give you a whole wardrobe. I also promised you a roast beef sandwich, which I didn't deliver. Yeah, yes, this is true. Apparently, I am, in fact, reneging. I don't really take any of this that seriously. Good, thank you, because I forgot. And I will, but I will. Remind me, somebody, that I need to get something for John. Would you like a pair of panties? I think. Uh, no, I don't Rafe need panties. Has a pair. Rafe has a pair? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing a giveaway. Rafe Needleman is also I have a pair, here. but not panties. <laughs> Editor at large at CNET.com. He also hosts the Reporters Roundtable podcast and did a video on the goodie bag, which yeah. we'll find out more about from uh, All Things D, the All Things D conference. I'm glad you were there because. Uh, you can tell us all about It's a good show. That. Yeah, the Tim Cook uh, talk got a lot of attention. We'll talk about that in a yeah. bit. Also here, and I think this is your first time on Twitter, if I'm not wrong, Doc Searles. It, it's my first time in video. I've been on it early, early in the on. Early like, days. In the low, in early days, yeah. It's so great to have you back. Doc.searles.com. Doc is uh, an internet visionary, one of the three authors of the Clue Train Manifesto, now more than four. 10 years ago. There were four. <laughs> you, David yeah. Weinberger... Chris Locke and Rick Levine. Chris Locke. Rick Levine right. is the shy one. He's the one who doesn't <laughs> hog a spotlight. But, uh, yeah, there are four of us. I like Doc because he used to be in radio. That always makes me feel good about somebody. <laughs> and uh, can't get rid of it. His new book is called The Intention Economy. You want to tell there us a little bit about that? What is that? What there is it that is all about? right there. Okay. Of course, it looks backwards on my screen. Um, uh, it's from Harvard Business Review Press. I've been hanging out there. It almost re reflects. Um, uh uh, for the last six years, I've been hanging out at the Berkman Center uh, at Harvard, where I've been working on a project uh, to encourage development of tools that help customers help themselves, make them independent of sellers that want to trap them and follow them around and the rest of it. Basically trying to improve uh, markets from the customer side rather than from the seller side. And we've got about 40 developers so far doing really good early work, I think. And so the book is partly a report on the work they've been doing and... Um, and partly the blue sky at the at the end of the at the end of the cycle that I see coming. So it's it's uh, you know one of my theories is that you know a free customer is more valuable than a captive one. If you listen to business wow. talk to itself, yeah, that that we we when I say we, I mean business and on the business side tend to talk about customers as these things that we want to lock in and own and right. manage and control. And, Look at Apple; and, they do oh, everything acquire, they can to lock you know, in. You know, yeah, you're, you're acquiring you're customers acquiring like they're slaves. Yeah. Or, or cattle and churn um, is the worst thing possible. It's a customer leaving. Oh my God, we've oh yeah, churn, yeah right. right. And 
Right, and 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 we you know spend uh, we being business again spend about eighteen billion dollars a year on uh, CRM systems, which by the way customers have nothing to do with. I mean they're they're trapped in those things too. They just basically give you call centers and junk mail. So right. so you know how can we control things on our side? If I want to change my address once for all the uh, entities that I deal with, how can I do that? If I want to set my own terms of service, if I want to advertise what I'm looking for without having to go to one site to do it, I can do it across many and respect that the the relationships I already have, for example, you know, so so let's say I want a certain kind of arcane car. Um, I can let I can do it anonymously with everybody but the outfits that I have an actual relationship with and I can control that relationship. Well, you're just so, a goddamn hippie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you never get over that shit. Uh, this is the. This really is, in many ways, what you predicted with the Clue Train Manifesto that that the internet would really transform uh, uh, consumers and, yet, and it markets. It wasn't happening fast enough. I mean, <laughs> so right. you know, Let's speed it up. I, you know, everybody kind of genuflected in the general direction of Clue Train, and they went ahead and did the marketing right. as usual. Like, hey, markets and conversations. We could talk at people now. You know, right. we can follow them. With cookies and tracking beacons, right. and then get social with them when they least expect it. And <laughs> so, it's, it's true. You really only hear from a company when you say something bad about them on Twitter, and then they appear right. mm -hmm. magically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, we care I now. Just went this week, as a matter of fact. So, yeah. 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 well, it's, it's like great that. to have all uh, three of you. It's a big week. There's lots to talk about. And I guess we should probably start with because I see Rafe using it. Uh, the wonderful Windows 8. Mm, it's great. Consumer preview shipped. Uh, what you don't you're not thrilled I, it's hard i'm trying to get excited about it it's just not happening uh, I, it's, I i think if i had a tablet i might be a little less meh but on a laptop i mean obviously the tab the laptop the desktop is dead the laptop is would you call it as as this guy here an unmitigated disaster that could decidedly hurt the company in its future did Un I say that? Unmitigated I, I, disaster. I was thinking about it. I was actually driving when I said unmitigated. That's the word I want. <laughs> no, it's the only word that makes any sense. It's a gutsy move. It is a tablet operating it's a gutsy system move. stuck onto a laptop. Well, that's what, you know. And, it's and, a focus group move. Well, what? I think it's a brave thing for Microsoft to say, look, we're going to cut cut off the past. We're going to cut off, yeah. Cut off our cut whatever. Cut off something, that's for sure. And we're going to try something completely new. They said we're going to reimagine Windows. They did. You can't deny that. They reimagined it. Um, it's risky. We were talking on Windows Weekly with Paul Throt and Mary Jo Foley this week, and they said, I think what a lot of people are saying, which is business will just ignore it, and the next business upgrade will be Windows 7, and they'll stay with that for years. Well, I was hoping, because I had played with the dev version, that I could hang out in the desktop, and I didn't have to worry about this Metro no. idiocy. But no, no, no matter what you do, it's just going to throw you back into the Metro interface, whether you like it or not. And That's then I keep, it keeps bouncing into desktop for me. I try to stay well, in Metro. Give me your system. I'll give you mine. And anyway, the uh, the thing that kind of the whole thing is kind of an. I, by the way, I ran Chrome on the on the desktop and it killed the whole system. Oh, good. Yeah, I think that was on purpose. Windows ain't done till Chrome, Chrome won't, won't run. run. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's an old Lotus joke. Um, I don't know. One of the things that struck me, is, I don't, I don't dislike it. I, in fact, I think I think geeks might kind of say, "Well, this is cool. This is different. This is new. This is innovative. They're they're it, trying stuff." But it is not. Um, it doesn't. It it lacks some um, way charm. Of, it, well, it certainly soul. lacks charm. It has charms. It has on the right no, hand side. Those are yeah. called charms. Yeah. It has no soul. It's a soulless, cold product that Unlike has no feeling. Windows Seven. Windows Seven is at least got some, you know, modicum of, of friendliness. This thing is just minimalist, cold. It's, screw you. From that perspective, it's beautiful. From a minute, yeah. Well, from, you, from an yeah, artistic you're perspective, you're collecting art. Well, they call yeah, it metro because you. it's supposed to be like subway signs. It's supposed to be kind of iconic. And it is no it, frills. One thing I do like is they've abandoned the skeuomorphism that Apple keeps to see. I was going to use that what? word. <laughs> Apple what? is sinking into skeuomorphism. It's non skeuomorphic That's what they've been saying about you. Is that Leo? how you pronounce it? Say it. I have no idea. Ske we have no idea. Yeah. We just like the word. Yeah. It means <laughs> leather stitching on your calendar app or torn off the remains of torn off calendar. You like it? I've heard another guy talk about this. <laughs> it's a ridiculous idea. Apple has gotten more and more into it. It's a, which is, by the way, I think Johnny Ive this week implied that he thought it was stupid. The chief designer at Apple doesn't like Good it for either. Him. Good. 
Uh, yeah. And I think this is what Microsoft's doing is they're eliminating those the frippery. But what it is not is it's not discoverable. There's moves on this. Like if you move the yeah, arrow, there are secret moves that you secrets. have to make. And like the the desktop is down here in the corner. And the charms are over here in, on this side. And you got to move the sometime. mouse just right. Yeah, and why would you yeah. know this without... You wouldn't. And the window... So why, so why is it well, Metro really... named after the simplicity of the subway so watch, system as you... Right, there's no map. It. You need a map. So watch this. Type CMD. Type it? Yeah. Just without doing anything? Yeah. CMD. Oh, my goodness. It, li it launches... You. There's how you get to a command line is you... Or anything is you type the first few letters and you hit return. Oh, how about nice. format... C. Can you <laughs> type that and see what happens? <laughs> RM F. Oh, there's an app directory here. There's an app. Well, yeah, see, it's non discoverable. It's non discoverable. Right. And but I neither, think that's a, neither is Apple. Neither is OS X. Well, at least you have there, a menu bar which you can browse. But there are a lot of hidden things in Apple that are totally non discoverable. So. And, uh, but the point here is that the learning curve, especially in business, is going to be miserable. But there are no business apps here. I mean, the Windows, all the apps that run on Metro are uh, the, the the Metro apps. There are things like uh, news, full sports, screen crap, travel, full screen, pictures, yeah, full crap. screen sports, screen. full screen news, crap. full screen crap. messages. Right, you won't say the it. business apps that you want still run under the whole desktop UI. So you've got this. That's Weird operating it. system. Full screen crap. We're going to abbreviate to FAP. You, may, I made this, mentioned this in my column, and you said it on your other show. So which is that be you got a 27-inch screen, got and you hit one of these things, and boom, the whole screen's got it's, one. The it, weather report. It's fine on a little laptop, but on a giant screen, it is a. It nice, is our, a tablet operating. It's a system. tablet OS. Yes, and they're enforcing it. Now, I've been trying really hard. I like that, that logo on the shirt. I get back to where I was. Way. You Looks just good. got me into this thing. I don't know how to get back. <laughs> Press the uh, Windows. Oh, you don't have a Windows a, key. No, you Press you, your command button. Function, command, Y. No, just command. Oh, oh that did it. Command always brings you back to the oh, start. Oh, thank you. I can help you use this. I, it, Today on Windows <laughs> Secrets. I want to like it. Okay. And I well, want to like I want to give Microsoft a little bit of credit for doing something new and different. But I think you, I agree with you. This will be an unmitigated disaster because I can. I, I just think people are going to look at this and go, "What the hell is this?" Why no, it am won't I be. Using it won't it. because they'll people. You'll be able to buy a Windows 8 tablet for 200 bucks, which will be way under what you can get a Mac tablet, right. an Apple tablet for. This is a low end product. Be worth every penny. This, yeah, you exactly. can buy the Kindle I agree. Fire for 200 bucks. Do you want it? People want it's the different. iPad. <laughs> it's not different. It's the same. Cheap Maybe. is cheap. I do have to say, there's a debate going on. According to uh, Paul uh, Thorat, there's a debate going on at Microsoft about whether when you launch this for the first time, you get a movie about how to use it. Mm -hmm. And some Ugh. people do not want to do that, and some people do. Now, Apple did that when they changed the scroll. Yeah. They would not let you use OS X Lion until you watched a movie about how scroll works and demonstrated... They broke scroll. Yeah, and demonstrated <laughs> that you knew how. You that actually be, had a that test. Should, that should be a rule. Every a time test. you break an operating system, you have to put a blocker video in place that people have to pass before... <laughs> You can use the operating system. Well, that's why they're. That's why some people say, "No, no, we shouldn't do that." But I think if you don't do that, of, it's an admission you just admission load the that. operating system. Meanwhile, somebody's breaking into the house. You got to get to the computer and call the cops. You over the over your one of your VoIP Doc, lines. This may be an example of a company and you're shot dead. Not listening to its customers. I don't know. I, I, you, you have. I mean, obviously, you don't really care. You're not using Windows. I don't care, no. I, I, mean, I, I, I use Linux. And he I doesn't care. He thinks so. the whole thing's a, but a joke. But an interesting thing, though, is Rafe is right that um, that Apple is just as obscure about some of this. So I actually bought one of those trackpad things as a Oh, a those mouse gestures. Substitute. Yeah. It's, it's, it's impossible. I couldn't use it. I mean, you use four <laughs> fingers for this or three for that, or you wipe left and right, and it's... It, it was all like everything, every gesture is cleaning the thing. I mean, that's kind of what it is. And yeah. I, I, it makes. You have a very and, clean trackpad. Yeah, you get a nice clean trackpad. If the you, dust does not settle on it. <laughs> I, I gave up and went back to a mouse and I gave it to my kid. Yeah. So, but did you, yeah, well, here's the test. Your kid knows how to use it. Oh, I'm sure he does. Yeah. yeah he, he hasn't gone to it. But he has the, the magic mouse too. And that has some of that same gesturable <sighs> business on the top with no physical sense of what it's doing. You why know, like, why, are, why, are, why are these companies that are successful companies mm -hmm. going down this path? Because what they're trying to do is really hard. Making something that does all this stuff that is instantly understandable and usable with a common library of, of commands and gestures is unbelievably difficult. Apple still doesn't have it right. Every time they come up with a new OS, they, they, they change the desktop or the spaces or the dashboard board or whatever they keep mixing it up they still haven't figured it they out, haven't figured it out. App, uh, microsoft now this is a 1 0 of a completely new ui paradigm they're not going to figure it out for years if they ever do chrome os didn't figure it out they thought they'd have a full screen system that's like no that's not going to work now we're going to have windows and chrome os android 
I don't even want to go there. I mean, nobody has figured out how to make this complex stuff work. Paul Therod also points out... Worked fine before. Microsoft has been furiously ripping legacy code out of Windows so that companies that want to make products, for instance, that re-enable the start menu, can't. Oh, that's fine. They, they, they are so committed to this. By the way, Ashton Kutcher in our audience today. I think I uh, want to say hi to Ashton. And, hey, there he is. Hey, yeah, Ashton, how you nice doing? To see you. Uh, they are working so hard. I don't know. I just... I just noticed. Uh, they are working so hard not only to change this, but to lock you in. Like, oh, don't let anybody have a tool that will bring it back to the old ways. We're going to strip that code out. They're getting more it's like Apple. It's time for Linux. It's very Apple-y. It is yes. time for Linux. Is Linux ready? No, it's well, it is, but no. nobody you wants need, to you believe it. Why you need a company to step forward? And what do you talk? You've got the it. command line. It, it, if you really want to go down that road, I mean, it, both it, OS X and and it, uh, Windows have I command like lines. I like using the mouse yeah. and moving things so, around. So, so I like Sony Drag, or drag Dell or, or Acer or somebody like that needs to step up. I think I don't know for Dell. D Dell right now, suffering like it is, ought to say, you know what? Screw it. We're just going to go with Linux now. We're going to, you know, we'll keep doing the Windows stuff, but we're going to start doing some really cool stuff with Linux, and we can work with Android too. Walmart could bring back the Windows PC. Why not? Actually, Photoshop doesn't run on on uh, Linux, and that's the problem. That, that, that is a problem. GIMP runs on it, and it's an, it's a substitute, but it's not quite as good. You know, somebody made um, an interesting yeah. point. I wish I could remember where. I probably saw it on a Hacker News. That there hasn't been really any new... Oh, remember, there used to be new OSs? That it wasn't unusual for BOS to come along? Yeah, well, there's React OS that's been trying to get traction. So there are new OSs? There, well... Or is that a Linux uh, No, it's not. It's, it's a clone. It's supposed to run Windows 7 apps. It's called React OS. And they're on point three alpha. And it's been around for, I don't know, five, six, seven years. I don't know how long. And I can't get it to run. <laughs> But, well, I tell you, this is not a new OS because it's trying to provide an operating system which is binary compatible with Windows. So yeah. that's slavish. That's slavish. Copy. Well, it'd be nice to I'd have like to an OS that innovation. runs some of this, that runs Photoshop, for example. Do you use Photoshop? Mm-hmm. For what? He likes to put monkeys' heads on beautiful women's bodies. You'll see, in the, you'll see on Monday. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> So I'll take a picture tempted, of this I man. Tempted John C. He'll be on the top of the blog. Oh, great. Um, Question my Photoshop usage. <laughs> he made a video once of Bill Gates swallowing for 15 minutes. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> he did a speech. It was at CES, I believe. And he swallowed so much that I took the whole speech, which was about an hour and 10 minutes, and I just put the swallows. Which... <laughs> just swallow after like swallow. A with a it was like ball. seven minutes of swallowing. <laughs> It was actually quite amusing. It's nice because, it, you know, it, you deserve it, Linux. It, <laughs> it, 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 10,000 years ago when I was in radio, we, we did this with uh, a uh, Ted Kennedy speech because all the Kennedys would go, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, right, uh, right, between right. every other word. And we cut everything uh, with the uhs, uh, and it sounded like a sheep. Uh, <laughs> uh, I can see that. Uh, 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 I will, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yeah. Oh, I, and, uh, uh. All right, we are, uh, we're, they, we've just gotten started. The ball has just begun to roll, and already yeah. it's careening around like a mad cow disease or something. John C. Dvorak, Rafe Needleman, Doc Searles, Leo Laporte, and go to my PC. Or you could be sitting there. I wouldn't even know it. Accessing I am. I'm your accessing, home computer, I'm accessing running Photoshop, something on the cloud as we speak. Putting something exactly called the chat room. Oh, the chat room. Well, you could do that with Go to My PC too. Actually, you know what? An interesting use of Go to My PC would be as a VPN. You're in an open access spot. You don't know what's going on. You don't. You don't, You want to have some privacy? Use Go to My PC to surf to your office computer and then surf to the outside world, and you're completely secure. It's wonderful, unless somebody's spying in your office. That's another matter. Entirely. Yes. Go to My PC. It is the best remote access solution from Citrix. Mac and PC and from your iPad and your iPhone, too. Now, that is awesome to actually run Windows on your iPhone. It's a little weird, I admit, but you can send and receive email, run any program, access all those network resources just as if you were at work. You never have to rush back to work because you forgot something or you need something or they're calling from work. You could do it all on the road, at a hotel, uh, internet cafe, anywhere from the pool. They like today. I wish they were doing this from the pool. We should do the show from the pool. Sometime. Okay. I'd like to do that. Love to see you in a Speedo. Mm -hmm. Go to my PC. I wear Speedos. I bet you do. But they're actually the shoes. And I use it as a <laughs> you gag. You Speedo shoes. I have a pair of... These aren't them. These are Skechers, another low-end brand. <laughs> yeah. So I got these Speedo shoes. I'm wearing Speedos, and it really impresses the girls until I show them that's just the shoes.
I don't think girls like Speedos. I don't think so either. Not any girl I met. Well, Go I to mypc.com, think... click the Try It Free button. It's like Brute or Axe. Girls don't like that <laughs> axe. stuff either. Have you ever a- a- uh, never mind. Axed, axed about Axe? It's, it's too Go hard. to mypc.com, click the Try It Free button, use the offer code TWIT, and you can try it free for 30 days. Do, just, you know, do me a favor. Try and see. Let me know what you think. Go to my PC. All right, I'm going to stick this here. This We're going to have like five commercials today. Could be. The more, the merrier. I got to pay your salary, John. Mm. Uh, did you it's see... Speedo Dexter. So, first of all, we get the revelation that Stuxnet, which was a virus that kind of took over the world a little bit, was actually created by the United States and Israel... We kind of knew this because it was originally we targeted. It. We suspected it was targeted at the Iranian nuclear plants, nuclear refinement facilities, and it, and it actually was designed to bring down the centrifuges mm-hmm. there. But, and I like Joe Biden's quote uh, in this uh, New York Times article. Apparently, it was modified in some way, and uh, and it escaped. <laughs> it broke through its cage and escaped into the wild. You know what's funny is I just saw Rise of the Planet of the Apes last night. Same thing. Same thing. Exactly. Same thing. Yeah. We think there was a... Mo- this is one of the briefers telling the president, uh, President Obama, we think there was a modification done by the Israelis, and we don't know if we were part of that activity. They don't know? Blame They're the Jews. They're briefing the president? Typical. Blame the Jews. Mr. Obama, according to officials in the room, asked a series of questions fearful that the code could do damage outside the plant. The answers came back in hedged terms. Vice President Biden fumed. It's got to be the Israelis, he said. They went too reading? far. New York Times. Oh, jeez. No New wonder. New York Times. <laughs> so uh, the way they got it in, first of all, the, uh, the, the Israeli, I mean, the Iranian uh, nuclear refinement plant was air-gapped from the outside world. Right. In other words, there's no connection to the outside world. Right, so they had to figure out a way to get this incredibly advanced engineered virus into an, a network that was not connected to the rest of the world. And how did they do that? They relied on the stupidity and gullibility <laughs> of human beings. How else would you do it? Another it, it, quote. Yeah, uh, USB ports, plug me in. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Thumb drives turned out to be crucial in spreading the first variants of the computer worm. Quote, it turns out there's always an idiot around who doesn't think much about the thumb drive in their hand. That's what I said. (laughs) That's the quote. Uh, The program was originally authorized by George W. Bush. That's how old it is. Uh, And uh, when uh, Obama took uh, office, it was called Olympic Games, Operation Olympic Games. Yeah. That's confusing. Well, it's not that confusing if you think of the fact that the Rockefeller Foundation came out with a report with five or six different scenarios for the end of the next few years, including a scenario about the Olympic Games, which includes 13,000 people being killed in the stadium by a terrorist attack, which is one of the reasons that the British overmanned it. So this is why, you, in 2012, in London, this is what they're afraid of, and this is why they released Stuxnet? I'm just saying that this is a kind of interesting of a going, coincidence. What was going on in the Bush White House was that you had Vice President Cheney saying, bomb the suckers. Mm-hmm. He really wanted the military option against Iran. He look, said, they're going nuclear, we got to bomb them. Yeah, look at our, McCain was worse. And apparently, yeah, McCain did too. And apparently, bomb, 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 bomb Iran. Exactly. Yeah. But apparently, uh, cooler heads prevailed and said, well, no, cyber warfare now, I want to ask a rhetorical question. The National Defense Authorization Act specifically says that if t- cyber warfare is committed on the United States of America, it's an act of war. So how is this not an act of war, and how come nobody's outraged about this? It is an act of war. It, it is, in fact, it's absolutely the, an act of war. Yeah, the Chinese oh, have yeah. been saying for years, when, when, when accused of hacking U.S. computers, you guys do it too. And we said, no, we do well, we do, but is and and, and and you know and you know what happened with with this attack? Did you get to that part? They actually managed this virus. Actually managed to it worked. Destroy centrifuges. Better than that, they were part. There were parts everywhere. Yeah, I mean, better than that, shook themselves to pieces because the, they screwed the, them up. It's, it did the other part, which is it awesome. scared the Iranian scientists awesome. so much they couldn't figure out what was going on. Right. So they took working centrifuges out. They took them all out. It, it did exactly what it was supposed to do. Right, and they had to send people down into like the centrifuge basement to watch them and. Have have walkie-talkies to talk to the people Except in the control room because the control room software was saying, oh, everything's fine. Meanwhile, the centrifuges are flying into pieces. Right. Except for so it cool. escaped. Come on, Yes, yeah, so here's cool? the problem. Now, this seems <laughs> to me... Except for this is it the, got out! And the Russians have already deconstructed the thing, and it seems to me is that what they've done is they've introduced a toolkit because this product has every sort of malware oh, functionality. Oh, now you're talking about Flamer. 
Oh, yeah, I'm talking about Flamer. That's, we'll get to Flamer. F- flamer, flamer is what I keep yeah. thinking about. Yeah, so this was, well, this was just like a test for Flamer. Yeah, no, Flamer's worse. Uh, so it originally spread via Windows. Why not? got out. Why not? They all get out. Why not? And targeted Siemens industrial software and equipment, in particular those centrifuges. Um, our, our, this SCADA, which is... This, the SCADA system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are the industrial systems that control our lights and... Supervisory control and data acquisition. Very good. Is what I had, I was, I'm on Wikipedia. I didn't know what it was. reading it right there. Yeah, right, Sarah. Uh, I did a show on it. Anyway, the, the whole infrastructure is based, obviously, on computer controls. You know, the power systems, transportation, uh, traffic lights. Right. You know, once a virus gets in there, it's... Uh, and no country is more dependent on computer control of infrastructure than ours. I would think Japan, but apparently I'm wrong. It's us. So that's the other risk. Is the fun doing, the as soon as you off. open this door, we're the ones who could really be in trouble, especially once these viruses leak out. Well, see, this yeah. is the problem I have with the Flamer, or Flame. Flame, yeah. Which is the, uh, it's, a, it's a 20 megabyte file. That's what's amazing. Yeah, it's a monster. It's 20 megabytes. Yeah, that was written by Microsoft, no doubt about they it. They think it's yes. more than 10, as much as 10 years old, you know. Yeah, but it's a, apparently an accumulation it can't, it can't, of all no, sorts. Ten years it's ago, got, you couldn't transmit 20 megs. It's got everything in it that you want. It's gotten bigger all the time. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. So whatever you want is in that code, and so you can send it after anybody, anywhere you want, if you can get a hold of it. And yeah. that one is targeted at... Uh, also Iran. Uh, people, in particular. And, and what it wakes up when they, when they like, open their email and reads their emails and takes pictures from their camera and yeah. listens to their microphone. In each module. There's different modules. So They're all in the, there, though. There's the camera module. Do you have to pay extra to get the yes, camera module? Or is, is, it like a, is it like freemium? Is it a free it's version a, and then an upgrade? Uh, it, uh, so, Flamer's size involves the use of many third-party code libraries, prefab modules. By the way, nice feature of Flamer when it installs, flame, flame. installs SQLite. Oh, that's nice. So you have a nice database on sure. there because it needs somewhere to store all the passwords and stuff it's collecting. Um, it was written in C and C++, and researchers are pretty convinced it also is governmental. There's nobody, no individual. Could. Well, as one of the people in the chat room says, it's can't, it works so well, it can't be made by the government. It's a, it relies on it's one person, a right winger. It uses Lua. Beatmaster. <laughs> a scripting language called Lua, which... Like That's why it's 20 megabytes. Well, no, it has a C, C++ code, and then the Lua is the glue code that chooses which... Mm. It's very sophisticated, actually. I wonder if there's a front end for it. You know what would be cool is you write this thing so it needs a... It has another module that doesn't... It's not included, but you plug it into this front end, which allows you to program it to do different things. Then you send it out into the wild where it latches onto some system and starts doing its that's, thing. That's how botnets work. Well, that's... Well, I know, but I'm talking about something that... that Command and control. A botnet, it usually has a centralized location that tells these things what mm-hmm. to do out on, the, uh, on the fly outside. But I'm thinking of taking taking the actual code and then customizing it with a, another piece well, of code. you're actually right, John, because that's one of the weaknesses of a virus is if you can look at the code and see where these servers are going to be, these mm-hmm. command and control servers, you can shut them down. In fact, exactly what Flamer did, it encrypted them, it modified them, it changed them based on date and time. And it, it would the, the authors would know ahead of time what the server was going to be, but there was no way that you could look at the code and determine what, this, what the uh, server was going to be. So they infected exactly what you're thinking to obscure the source of the command and control botnets. It's very clever. Yeah, it's nasty work. So, so, so I'm wondering what happened to the person who smuggled the uh, Stuxnet into the Iranian facility. Are they still alive? Did they get tortured? Did they, they get star on the that. wall in, in right. Langley or what? If right. they could find out who it was. If you he know, was. Are they, are they a hero or a joke? It's an it depends question. if he's one of ours or one of theirs. Uh, I, he's, uh, well, the, he's, he's one of them, right? But he's working for the, the times. Us, the times us said that, us, uh, the U.S. And, and Israel. Right. The right. Times said the U.S. and Israel relied on engineers, maintenance workers, and others, both spies and unwitting accomplices. But you're right. Somebody's got a hand. I the think infected U.S. You could also so, somebody's do getting their hands cut off or broken or some other thing like well, that. Well, no, I mean, you, you remember know, the right, government right. is going to say, "Oh, it could have been anybody." They're going to go after people if they could figure it you out. You know, your uh, what's yeah. his name, the hacker that wrote the book that did social or Mitnick. Oh, Mitnick. 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 He made this interesting idea or mention an interesting idea is you, all you, nobody has to be responsible. You just leave a disc laying around that right. says payroll, total, you know, everybody <laughs> in the company, payroll disc, and then it, it, it's spreadsheet not to do confidential. Right. And people will plug it in. How That's much, probably all it took. How much President right. Ahmedinejad makes. Yeah, it's and just, it's right there, right so you, on it. And then, yeah, yeah. It was, once you put it in, you're screwed. Right. That's called uh, social engineering. Social engineering, I'm just, yeah. Um, or Anna Kornikova photos. That would so. Be is one. there? Uh, is there? Uh, I mean, it seems as if we should be using every 
every weapon we can, including cyber warfare, especially this this probably saved lives instead of bombing the plant. Yeah. Is there something immoral about this, uh, do you think, Doc? Well, it's, you know, there's something hypocritical about it. Um, you know, this, this news comes out at a time when other countries in the world are wanting the ITU or the United Nations to, to take over for ICANN and yeah, things like that. Yeah, that's a nice and, one, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's sort of a, it, it, it's happening at, at, and at the same time, I think maybe as Rafe was saying it, saying it earlier, uh, there's, a, there's a bit of hypocrisy involved here because we're, or, or John, John was saying that, you know, if we, we have a rule that says if, if you're doing a cyber attack on the U.S., it's an act of war. Well, that was an act of war. Obviously, it was an act of war. Yes. Um, we, sh you know, no act of Congress. It's a gambit. So, no, saying, saying that cyber terror or cyber warfare is an act of war uh, is a gambit to convince or try to convince uh, enemies that we're not going to do it <laughs> when, in fact, we're it. working on it. Right. It's, it's, right. it's, yeah. it's a, it's a right. you know, it's a simple wartime operation. It's all about deceit and misdirection. No, we would never do this. Right. I'm reading yeah, it. Had, we've had a policy for now, what, 11 years or 12 years, ever since 9-11, uh, that we're at war with terrorism, which is not a country, it's not a anything, it's just a, it's a behavior, which is an interesting thing, too. And there's no precedent for that, as far as I know. That's, that's a tough war to that's, fight. That's more of a, it, um, they shouldn't call that a war, they should call it not the a policy, war on that's drugs. a police action, yeah, not a war. Yes, the war whatever. on drugs is yeah. similar. Yeah, that worked yeah. so well. Yeah, no, it's a winner. Yeah, John Perry Barlow declared <laughs> us uh, losers in that this week, by the way. Oh, did he? Yeah, he said, we've lost the war on drugs, now what? Um, preemptive cyber strikes against perceived national security threats are, according to Nick Harvey of Great Britain, uh, he is, uh, who is he? He is somebody important, British, British Armed Forces Minister, uh, civilized, a civilized option. To neutralize potential attacks. I think it is more civilized to... Well, okay, it's more civilized to break a centrifuge. Now, it might not be so civilized to turn off power to a major city. Exactly. Or is it civilized to, you know, um, do a diehard on, uh, you know, the air traffic control system? Right. You're right. That So there are civilized and uncivilized cyber attacks. That's a, that's a dodge. Going after, going after the centrifuge war is a big deal. Messy business. And it is a messy business. What remains disturbing, said uh, Armed Forces Minister, what's his name? Oh, I'm sorry. This is, now this is, oh, this is a whole conversation going on. Malaysian Defense Minister Ahmed Zahid Hamidi said a cyber arms race is already underway. He urged members of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations to pool their resources to tackle increasingly complex cyber attacks. What remains disturbing is that cyber warfare need not be waged by state-run organizations. Ah, here's where terrorism comes in, but could be conducted by non-state entities or even individuals. It's just another kind of weapon. Yeah, and like any weapon, weapon, it's it can a weapon be run. you can't control. And it's a weapon that 12-year-old in New Zealand control? can use. You can't control terrorists. I mean, they're using weapons that you can't That's control. Fine. But it's I mean, this weapon. flame, this flame uh, you're, you've, you've, you've weaponized this tool, uh, and it's, it's out there. Anybody the more and the more out there it is, the more people will be building defenses against it. This okay. is okay. Well, that's a good point. Okay, I'll quit then. So we shouldn't wait. We yeah, should stop worry. while you're ahead. But should should we not be doing this? Yes, you're saying we should. I, I I'm saying that's a ridiculous argument. It's inevitable as you build yeah. products that are technologically based. You attack right. them with technology, and to think that we shouldn't be doing it because it's wrong. Why don't it's, we just, it's a form. It, war is wrong, and this is a form of war. Let's just stop. Well, war. but okay, but, done. Uh, uh, just to drive it into complete absurdity, we don't. We agree to not use biological weapons. We agree not to use, you know, poison gas. So there are some weapons in war that we have kind of universally agreed they're so devastating, so horrible, like we nuclear weapons. It. Well, we do use nuclear weapons, and we haven't agreed not to. Although there is a non-proliferation mm -hmm. pact, but that's not exactly the same. It's more like we'll keep those. You don't need those. You do have a point. You do have a point. But there, there, there are weapons but that are so horrendous. There, we don't. There is a. It's very difficult, I think, to draw the line between cyber and non-cyber, because we war is increasingly technological. The, the 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 weapons are based on machines and technology and computational stuff. So where do you say we're not going to attack those with the things that they're made out of? I don't know where I don't know how you can possibly. We had draw a the visitor line. to the studio yesterday who's working on autonomous drones, not for right. use overseas, but for use here in the United States. Oh, we'll be droning our, each other shortly. Oh yeah, <laughs> I can see Oakland getting a few <laughs> and the Hellfire <laughs> missiles <laughs> and the drone 
continues. More. All, I, all, I, all I have to say on drones, by the way, is let us replace traffic copters with unmanned four-pound drones. We will save money and lives. Could, should they have armaments of any kind? Yeah, traffic well, copters, absolutely. I think they should be armed to the – yeah, and, and, and also be bombs in case they uh, – yeah. yeah. I think they should be like – Air to service traffic missiles. It should yeah, be like right. in Spy Hunter. They should be able to drop oil – Thumbtacks. Right. <laughs> do, 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 I like do, the thumbtacks. <laughs> He's speeding. Drop the thumbtacks. Uh, we're going to take a break and come back with more on this fabulous episode of This Week in Tech. I'm glad you're here. Actually, before we uh, go to the commercial, well, let's find out, because I like to plan ahead, what's going on in the weekend. We've got Tom Merritt just over there in our newsroom, ready to go. Tom? Hey, thanks, Leo. Here's a look at some of the things coming up in the week ahead. Busy week for conferences. Tuesday, June 5th, E3 kicks off down in L.A. That runs through June 7th. Most of the press conferences are actually before the kickoff on uh, Sunday and Monday. Also, Computex kicks off and runs through the 9th in Taiwan. Lots of hardware coming out of that, including a bunch of tablets and laptops. Airtime debuts on June 5th as well. That's a new project from the Napster founders and the Samsung Galaxy Appeal Go phone hits AT&T. Wednesday, June 6th, Google plans to introduce the next dimension of Maps. Uh, might be a way to scoop there. WWDC if Apple switches off you Google Maps. Yeah, also, Intel's that. first smartphone goes on sale in Europe on Wednesday. And Wednesday, June 6th, is World IPv6 Day. Finally, Friday, June 8th, the Southeast Linux Fest in Charlotte, North Carolina takes place. That's a look with the week <laughs> ahead. Back to you, Leo. You know, I, I'd like are to you, say... Are you speaking I, of that? I could uh, say... But, you know, I've, I've decided to stop talking to Tom. Why? Because He's right over there. No, I'm not going to say anything to him. I've had it. He likes you. No, every time I try to have a conversation, he, he leaves. He leaves, huh? Yeah. Um, we, I do want to talk a little bit about E3, what we can expect there. You were at All Things D, Ray. Yes. I'd like to find out more about what you got in the swag bag. You mean other than the panties? Other, well, we didn't talk about the panties on the show. Oh, yes. So we, we can bring that up. I have you, a video if, of it somewhere. Uh, should, we, should we watch that video? All right, uh, it's let's, like, let's prepare... Rafe's swag bag video. We'll get to that in a moment. That's called a tease. D10 swag bag video. Yeah. Google Everything. It. They actually, wait a minute. You, yeah. Were you a panelist or you just got it for showing up? Everybody gets it. It's like going Attendees? to the Oscars. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. What was yeah. the value? This year? Not, yeah. so, not so hot. You know, you have to declare it on your taxes. I <laughs> declare the panties on my taxes? Yes. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Dang. It's true. That's going to cost me. The whole <laughs> value of the bag. That's exactly right. It wasn't this year. wasn't so hundred bucks, fifty bucks, this thousand dollars. Doesn't there, CNN have rules about that? Yeah. Well, um, so you, you gave the swag bag back. Yeah, you gave it back, and it's you, in the, the office. The I don't away. know what to do with it. I mean, I've got a drop cam. Uh -huh. That's the big, the big deal. A drop cam. Yeah. Uh huh. Hmm. That's it. That's it. Uh huh. We're gonna take a break and come back with more, Mr. Needleman. We shall, we shall speak to you next about the swag. But first, a word from Gazelle. Hey, if you've got some stuff in that swag bag you'd like to sell, <laughs> right. Gazelle it. Whether you got an iPhone, an iPod, an iPad, a Samsung, a Galaxy uh, 2S, S2, whatever it is, uh, if it's taken up space in your drawer, some people have gadget drawers. You know, the old gadgets go in a drawer or a closet. There are people who have storage lockers filled. There are hoarders. You know, that stuff's not getting more valuable. In fact, I'm pretty much sure it's never going to gain value. Sell it now while you still can. And Gazelle's the best way to do it. Visit it right now. G-A-Z-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E, just like the uh, the uh, the antelope, right, that runs across the uh, the African veldt. Gazelle.com. If you, if you click the drop-down, you'll see they, they've actually reduced the things that they buy because they found out most people just want to sell these. iPhones, iPads, iPads. Apple TVs, laptops, desktops, displays, bad, Blackberries, HTC, Motorola, Samsung, LG, Android phones, or Nokias. Let's say, all right, let's, let's try. I, tell you, I got a second generation iPad I want to get an offer on. So this is how easy it is. That's one of the things I like about this now is it's just you click a button. Was it a Verizon or AT&T? It was AT&T. I wonder if the price is different. It's Verizon. 335 bucks. Wow. Now, here's the deal. They'll send you a check. They'll PayPal you. But little tip, little pro tip here. Amazon gift card gets an extra 5%. So that would be my recommendation. G-A-Z-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Don't sell it because, oh, they said don't say that. <laughs> Why not? I don't know. I like it. I made that up. Gazelle your gadgets today and make a little money on the side. Why pay rent? And by the way, they pay for the shipping. And uh, they, the, uh, the quote is good for 30 days. So you can you just go and find out what, it, what it's worth. You can decide. You got time. It's hard, I know, to let go of those old iPads. Oh, I have such memories. Gazelle at gazelle.com.
Uh, John's, uh, okay, so we're going to, do you want to look at the swag? Do we have it on uh, on your uh, computer? All right, John um, Slanina, which, by the way, means bacon in Polish. John Slanina, is that Polish? Czech is here is with. That, is that a yes or is that Czech? Yes. Not po not, Czech. It's Czechoslovakian. Czech. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see the, the swag bag, or is it swag bag? It's swag. Swag is not Yiddish. It's stuff we all get. S or souvenirs, wearables, like and gifts. Uh, the, 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 I, think the, I don't think that's where it out. comes from either, either way. Do you think it's, it's one of these things that sounds no like one, Yiddish but isn't? It's not Yiddish. No, it should be swag, but swag? it's actually swag. You got some swag. Stuff we all get. So what'd you get? Where's this thing? I don't know. Let's Wasn't that it. great? But, oh, Here it oh, is. Geez. There's Rafe. All right. Uh. <laughs> uh, you can't hear what he's saying. Here. He's just talking. Well, he's like, Hello, my right. name is Rafe Gale Van Ivey, editor at large. You see that? And I just came back from the office. Of of ridiculous amounts of swag. Last year, there were two bags full, literally. Two bags full? This and it's down to one? Yeah. It's not doing so well this year. The That's a pretty good sized bag. It's a lot. Um, it's mostly air. Could be because of the economy finally affecting the tech industry. I am, am I going to MS3K uh, myself here? That, uh, yes. <laughs> That's what's going you on. You should here. comment on your own video. Gear in here. Can Last you just year, put our profiles in front of her? Hey, get to the point, will you? This guy in the video. <laughs> I was actually trying to provide context here about why the swag bag is so lame this year compared to last. No bottle of wine. Overheating a little bit, bit and. No. Um, you need little human figures. Uh, last the year we got the like science. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Fire, so, uh, that product had to go back. And then of course it was the HP. I should Veer, do a director's cut. Right? The, the director's <laughs> cut. Uh, Rafe Nealman. The director's one, cut. Everybody went to D. Has one. Uh, so let's see what's in here no, for finally. this year, and hopefully its stuff will fare a little bit better. Now there's less stuff in here than there has been in years past. Yes, we know. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Open the damn bag. You know, funny thing about doing this video is I actually didn't have a live audience heckling me when I was taping it in my hotel room. Open the damn bag. Oh, he's opened it finally. You get a lovely fleece pullover. Oh, that's nice. That's attractive. It's just a pullover. Oh, yeah. That's good. Kara Swisher would look great now. Doesn't Inside, say D on it. Like Why does it say Ethan? Year, says Ethan. <laughs> Ethan's a guy I interviewed from. Uh, you stole his bag. <laughs> no, he was the guy from uh, from Yahoo. What's his name? Why did his name pop up there? Uh, but there is, of course, a hoodie. This guy from Yahoo I interviewed. I think it'd be funny to just keep pulling the stuff out. Ethan Petrosky is the guy who runs the Yahoo Access browser. For some bizarre reason, his name showed up on a swag bag video. That's odd. That's very odd. I think that's Kelly's fault back at the ranch. Very nice, cozy hoodie. Um, hoodie. You can't be a CEO if, you're, if you don't have a hoodie anymore. There's a target on it. And I if, don't know this logo. I probably should. What is that logo? I have no uh, idea what that logo so that is. It's, there's branding for you. Right yeah. There. It's, there's, it's that's the target. Something from Oregon. target going the online. The D-hat. Oh, please, this uh, is boring. Throw that crap. The fun yeah. stuff's at the end. Where's the panties? They're the, all the way at the end, and this is like a uh, five-minute Now he's video. embarrassed by he, he introduced the video to us, and now I did not say, please play the video. That was Leo. Sunglasses from Spotify. Oh, uh, so it's so really this is a lame, lame, lame. chance for them to advertise. Paperwork and stuff. You don't have to give any of this back. This has no value. No, it's valueless. A USB key from, uh, who cares? <laughs> With Stuxnet on it. <laughs> <laughs> Very handy. Hoffman, yes, idiot. Give Reed this to the idiots at Reed Hoffman. Things Reed D. Hoffman, every time he speaks a D, he gets me in trouble because they're like, you got to cover Reed Hoffman. And I sit down, I'm ready to block. He's supposed to be very smart. Uh, he's very smart. Founder but he, of but LinkedIn. There's very I've heard little of news that comes out in this talk. There's a book. So I'm using that right now to run Windows 8 on my, my Mac Air nice. right here. Parallels is good. Three people yes. on Windows machines and the rest on Macs. Yep. That's just the way the world is going. I'm sorry, people in the chat room, that this guys. video was not made <laughs> live for you. Uh, Look, there we are watching it, though. How come there's not a shadow of a robot? Oh, there we go. That's very good. I like that. Nice job. Is that Doc? Is that the square one? Is Doc? I love yeah. That. Uh, it's Max Trollbot. Yeah, it's from Ion. Yeah. Skull candy. How do they do that so fast? That's awesome. We had it lying That's around. The, oh, okay. That's the one thing I'd want. Thank so you, man. That's right. Who's the one with the uh, right. female profile there? That's uh, Liz. Okay. Liz Lemon. Let's see. Two things left, one of which is cool. The only thing of value in here is... Dun, da, da. Here's the drop cam. That's a nice uh, thing. We really use those. We have you know what? I do not like that product. <laughs> Why not? It's a great piece of hardware, but you buy the thing for, I don't know what it is, 100 bucks, 150 bucks, and then in order to actually use it, you have to subscribe, subscribe which is another 100 bucks a year. I think they have a free... Uh, they have a free thing, but you, that's why buy the free thing is no good. Yeah, because it doesn't send you alerts or, or record video or stuff like that. 
from the moment you've all been waiting. This is for. pretty suspicious. What now, could that be? It looks like jewelry. I have in the past. I was very piercing. pleased. You do not have to subscribe to the drop cam. I know that, but it's really much more useful if you do. True and Company is an online bra retailer. <laughs> they have a new algorithm, a set of algorithms for helping women find the bras that fit them best without having to go through the <coughs> measurement mm -hmm. process. Really? So I can just go to the website and find the right bra? Yeah, you, you, you tell it like which bras that you wear, you pinch you, and where, yeah. and how, what dress size you normally wear. What is it? True, <laughs> true bra, true, true and bra, true and co. Something to match the bra you're going to buy from True. There we go. It's Zappos for no, Brazier. Kind of, uh... Uh, I don't think this fits me. Look, you even wrote an article about that. Right? <laughs> I know. But you should have, so I know so much about it. Uh, drop me a note. Good I don't know what to what? do with them. Um, and I'll find out what size they are later on. So uh, that there purple, you go. the purple would match That's my shirt. What you get if you come to the D conference. In addition, of course, to now, Tim Boy, really, that really was that was that was. Well, how gripping. was that? Fifteen minutes? What was this? Oh, but I did. I didn't see you recording any videos from the D conference. I'm just saying. Spotify. All over. It's a fast. Oh, uh, Nathan Mervold speaking tomorrow. All right, very, that's it. Very Wrap crisp, it up. Good no more. It's interesting preview. We'll I thought Tim Cook. Yeah, you can you can cut this. Uh, yeah, cut I thought, it. So, so, so Rafe, did anybody wear that thing on their head? Um, <laughs> it, I would. Ask. I believe that or, probably about half the guys were wearing that um, the, under the their panties on under their, their head. Clothes. Yeah. Huh. Or, or so, as a necklace or some other thing. That'd be cool. Is yeah. your are your breasts equally round all over? Well, you want to check. Is your chest yeah. flatter at the top and wider at the bottom? Manties. Or, if you place three fingers in the center of your chest, your breasts are more than three fingers wide That's apart. That's a kung fu move. <laughs> you have... Really? I'm gonna, wow. I'm going to decide... I want mine... I don't know. That's my shape right there. And then... Uh, uh, <laughs> you have a... Oh, man. I didn't even know that's called... Boobs? That's called a balconet. Why not? What's a balconet? How would you even know about this site? I don't. Rafe, Rafe, how would Needleman. I know? They pitched me. Oh, okay. It was okay. the only preview that I had time to take before they the D conference started. Me. <laughs> oh, now I got to say, as much as I love the D conference, the startups that were pitched there were mostly of this caliber. It's kind of like, eh, kind of interesting from a business perspective, right. but eh. I thought Tim Cook got a lot of ink, and I yeah. thought he was interesting, but he didn't say anything. He was interesting, but he didn't say anything. Does that he make logical said, sense, that sentence? He's, well, yeah, I'll give you an example. Then you tell me if he said anything. He says, we're going to double down on secrecy. What does that even mean? It means that they're going to even be more secret. <laughs> that Apple's even going to be more secret than they are before. Now, Except, that's not it, saying anything, but it's still even interesting. they won't know what they're doing. That's interesting. Except he even said, they won't know what they're doing. He said, doing. we're going to double down on secrecy except on things like openness when it comes to manufacturing. And then the report comes out that their, process, their uh, policies and stuff in China and Foxconn uh, plants are actually not that good. So they want to be they'll, more they'll, transparent they'll and open. PR. That's the deal. That's what yeah. they're going to do. Now you got it. We're going to double down yeah. on PR. So, it, see, we're translating now. This, it, Cook was really interesting. I mean, the thing about the D conference, uh, I wrote this and many other people have written this as well. There was one guy at D who was, like, over everything. His, he impacted every single session. Steve Jobs. Totally Steve Jobs. Yeah. He was... In uh, pa not, not this year, but in past years. No, this year. This year. This year, it was Jobs' show. It's it amazing. Was, it was Cooks was the, the not Jobs CEO. Right. There was the guys from Spotify talking about iTunes. There was Ari Emanuel talking about movie industry with, you know... Uh, um, with uh, which jobs impacted uh, with Pixar? There was Ed Catmull of, of Pixar and Disney talking about that. Al Larry Ellison and Ed Catmull did a reminiscing uh, what it was like to work with Steve Jobs. This jobs is more impact was everywhere. That's more a reflection of Walt Mossberg's sycophantic love for Apple than anything else. Uh, I don't. That's not what the tech industry is. Doing. I, I would. I would. I would not argue that. Well, it was a con well. Mossberg has written a lot of good stuff about Jobs, but <laughs> yeah, a lot about Apple. Yeah. But I'm telling you, all the speakers there made references yeah. to him in one way or the other. By Walt Mossberg, I, I I don't think he said you have to talk about Jobs mm -hmm. in order to come up on stage. I, I'm, I'm suspicious of the whole thing. By the way, here's some of the things Tim Cook told us. Curtis is he, right. He yeah. he really loves being CEO at Apple. Oh, yeah. he says I'm, it's an incredible time. I'm loving every oh, minute. I'm sure of he is. He says, I've never seen a product and technology l that customers loved more than the iPad. Huh. Yeah. Really? Yeah. He says, uh, I learned a lot from Steve. Oh. Yeah. Let me write that down. Yeah, he taught us all of life <laughs> is fragile. Yeah. Uh, he's a visionary, too. Yeah. Uh, on Steve? Apple, yeah. Huh. Steve. On Apple TV. Now, he said some interesting things. He said, for instance, mm -hmm. the Apple TV is... Now, please parse this, because you were there. You saw him. You saw his expression. Maybe you got some sense from what his face is saying, what he meant, when he said the Apple TV is not a fifth leg of the stool. 
What the hell? <laughs> what kind of stool is part. this? <laughs> I don't remember really that particular quote. Stool. <laughs> Nothing but stool. <laughs> I believe I believe an Apple TV is. I, I'm not sure, but I believe an Apple TV is kind of inevitable based on what uh, he said and the way Ari Emanuel, uh, who the super agent Ari Emanuel, you know from from Entourage, right? Um, Ari Gold, right? The way, which by the way, spot on. Really? Oh, totally. That's great. Um, it's uh, it's Rahm Emanuel's brother. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, th- when uh, I think it was Kara asked Ari, uh, so what do you think of the Apple TV? And Ari says, "Haven't seen it. Don't know what you're talking about." <laughs> and he does a little smirk like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, except I I can't smirk like mm-hmm. that. Interesting. That man can smirk. Interesting. There, I don't, and I, I don't. I've been reading the transcripts. I didn't watch the video of yeah. Tim Cook, but somehow people got the sense that there was going to be not the Apple TV we know, but an Apple Television set. Well, Apple needs to move into new markets in order to become the trillion dollar company that everybody wants them to become. They need to move into new markets, and TV is it. And apparently, the set top boxes, even the u- uber simple set top boxes like the Apple TV and the Roku, they're just not making an impact. He sold 2.7 million of them. I mean, nothing. It's nothing. It, it's, it's not the hardware. It's the deals they do right. for, the, for the content. And you're they don't a- have those deals yet. And ESPN abs- is holding up everybody. And who is? What, what Apple wants to do is blow up cable, and they're too dependent on cable, but that's, a, that's, that's what you have to do. If you're going to move TV past the logjam it's in now, you have to move off of the, you know, off the 500 channel world where, you know, there are all these bundles and it's a it's an awful system nope. into something that looks like the net. And I think that's what Apple kind of wants to do while owning the show. And they're only going to be able to do that by doing their deals. And, and, I, and I don't know what that's going to be, except it will probably involve Disney. Uh, you, Doc's absolutely right, and only in the technology industry, only Apple has the pull and the chutzpah to pull off a move like that and to really upend the TV industry the way it did with music and the way it did with the with the telcos. Only Apple can do that, as far as I as far as I know. Exactly. Yeah. Sony. It used there, to be Sony, but not anymore. Sorry, what? Yeah. Yes, Steve is the only guy who proved he could do that over and over again. Yeah. I'm not sure that that Tim Cook has that leverage. That's the question. Yeah. Exactly. So is this a more lock-in, though, Doc? I mean, you were just saying how companies shouldn't be... Well, sure. I mean, that's what they're doing, right? They want to own it well, all. Well, here's the thing. We're going to have stuff that's free and stuff that's paid, and that's it. You know, and it's going to be either subscription or a la carte. doesn't matter what it is. They're going to make it as easy as they possibly can, and they're going to do their deals, but you're going to pay for it. Right. Whatever it is, you're going to pay. Right now, it's too much. I mean, people don't want Why to Why shouldn't we pay for content? It you know. costs money to make it. No, we, I, I don't think most people have a problem with doing that. I, Apple proved that with iTunes, you know, 10 years ago. Right. The, the question is, how can they make that work with, t, with, with video content? How can they do that? And probably what they do is look, they're looking at YouTube and saying, well, that's all the free stuff, and we're going to have the good stuff. And you can get the free crap on YouTube, and you get the good stuff on, on our thing, and it's not just going to be TV. It's, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they make a screen that exceeds the dimensions of 1080p because that's what the iPad oh, that's, wait the a minute, that, wait a minute. that's interesting you mean a 4k yeah. screen for instance exactly I think that's where they're going I think that's where they're going to go and 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 they're, they're looking at 1080p as a 1996 standard and they're tired of it and they and, want to break out of it and, and it won't be 4k it does it won't be 4k it'll be some non-standard right. Apple it'll be thing 2.8k oh, you know you're right thing. and they're going to work with you know they'll be the, the thing is that most movies right now are being shot in 1080 so whether or not you know they're going to drag Hollywood into higher, I think higher not. Resources. Actually, I think uh, Hollywood I is doing more and more 4K, and that's certainly how. Okay. Well, yeah, there you the, go. That's, that's James great. Cameron's pushing that very heavily. And he's that's, also he's also pushing 60 FPS, faster frame, frame rates, frames per and second. higher resolution because we want the world to look like a soap opera. Well, yeah, and, and, that's and no looking, because you're thinking it's going to yeah. look like the interpolated LCDs. It doesn't. It looks more realistic without interpolation. Mm. Uh, interpolation. The faster frame rate and the higher resolution makes it just look like you're right here. Yeah. It's very vivid. Now, the, the, and so, by the way, you don't need 3D, in my opinion. How about spending money for writers and good content no, rather than no, bull no, crap? No. We just got to blow more crap up and, and, and make it 3D. <laughs> That's all you have to do. Writing is hard. Explosions are easy. <laughs> Expensive, though. The right. challenge with going to 4K and 60 frames per second or whatever is that that's going to just... We don't have the bandwidth for that. I do like this idea that Apple... Because if Apple's going to do a television set, it's got to do something different. I mean, there's it's a commodity at this point, right? Samsung, yeah. LG, Sharp, Sony. 
what's the difference? They're minor, minor differences. These are commoditized right. products at this point. So Apple doesn't want to join that parade. Right. But what do they do that makes it unique? Is it user interface? Is it higher resolution? It's both. It's content deals. Okay, it's the mm -hmm. deals. It's the, you plug it in. Plug in the TV. Uh, turn off your your hundred dollar, hundred twenty dollar a month cable subscription. Just plug it into the internet somehow. Well, that'll make people happy. That's not going to work. How do you work. get? How do you make a product that kills Comcast, Cablevision? Well, Apple is managing to kill everything that the wow. that the mobile carriers do. I mean, they've taken over. Uh, just like BlackBerry did, except in a bigger scale, they're taking over SMS. Eventually, with you know Skype, right. etc., will take over the calling, which is why you buy a phone. Um, is for okay. So yeah. Anyway, it, related story. If, imagine if Apple had bought Skype. Just interesting thought. Mm. Mm. Would it would it have been any different? I mean, Microsoft hasn't done anything with Skype. Apple right, has exactly. FaceTime. They've which degraded isn't exactly it. Exactly taken over the world. They've, I don't think they're degrading. We use look at look how good Duck looks. Yeah, it looks okay. I think yeah. Skype's. I we're not think Skype's anymore. We're not degrading Doc. The, the code the codec is great. It's just the UI still sucks. Yes. Yeah. Oh, there was a bit of D about how I think it was Topolsky who lambasted the guy from uh, um, from Skype about how crappy the Mac UI is. Yeah, well, rightly so. Yeah, really. It's fact. We actually were telling. Our, uh, we use Skype for all of our remote guests. We were telling people, do not, whatever you do, do not upgrade to yeah. Skype 5 on your uh, Mac. I made a big mistake doing that. Yeah. And now, here's the thing about, about Skype. Microsoft owns Skype, and Microsoft also has a giant investment in Facebook. That's the real connection, Skype plus I Facebook. Agree. I agree. I agree. It's the same reason Microsoft, yes, same reason Microsoft bought patents was to defend Facebook against the Yahoo onslaught. Mm -hmm. There's the Microsoft-Facebook nexus is very interesting. Very and important. yet, Tim Cook said... Stay tuned. Right. So everybody's expecting that oh, iOS. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Stay tuned when they said, All right, what about Facebook integration and iOS? You've got Twitter. What about mm -hmm. Facebook? Do you guys hate Facebook? He said, no, I saw Sheryl Sandberg in the hall. We were great friends. We have different, you know, our companies people, are going in different directions. But stay tuned. People make a big yeah, deal about the fact that iOS 5.1 or 5, whatever, is all integrated in with Twitter and not Facebook. But Facebook is still embedded in a lot of Mac apps, a lot of OS right. 10 apps. I mean, Facebook iPhoto. Connect is huge. Yeah. But, but Facebook is built into Mac apps. Oh, I see what you're saying. Apple's own apps. Yeah, Apple's yeah. own. So it'll come to, I, I believe iOS 6 will have a lot of Facebook integration. Facebook yeah, and Twitter are different, but, totally different things. But Microsoft plus Facebook is like double the lack of originality. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, you get two for one. You know, I, I, well, I, I'm sure Microsoft's yeah, I, hoping I, that some of the Facebook charm will rub off on them. And Facebook's <laughs> hoping that Microsoft will provide... Hopefully not charm. their stock price. <laughs> God. <laughs> really? So, what? Uh, no, but, Doc, you understand you're swimming upstream when you say that. 800 sure. million, 900 million people use Facebook now, use it regularly. I, actually, the last time I was on Twitter mm. was when you got off Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that? And I and you know why I'm and back? You got back on. I did, yeah. and you know why? Because you can't yeah. not you can't cover the industry and not be using right. Facebook, right? Oh bull! <laughs> I don't use Facebook. I cover the industry. Some would say you might be a little out of touch, John. <laughs> well, they they've been saying that for twenty years. <laughs> I felt that I needed to know when Facebook announced these products. I needed to look at them. Oh. <laughs> John, I'm not like you. I can't grok something from a distance. I have to participate to understand it. I just listen to what you have to say, and I just copy what you say. So I'm glad somebody's doing the basic footwork. Somebody's got to do footwork. It's not me. <laughs> hey, I am sacrificing myself. I am well aware of that by using Facebook. You use Facebook, Rafe. I know. We're buddies. We're Facebook pals. I know exactly yes. what's going on in your life. You know exactly moment. what I want you to know about what's going on in my life. Uh -huh. mm. Lies That's on Facebook. Facebook. Facebook is, my, is individual people's PR arms. Any, anyway, you're right, yeah. Doc. I did get off Facebook. Facebook, I felt Facebook was, and I even more so after the we kind of started to learn about the shady stock stuff, that was never been has been the nicest people in the world. Uh, and yet, I kind of say, as a user, I kind of like it. Hmm. I kind of it kind of sucks I, you in. Is it not I, addictive? I, you you always go to no. your timeline and look at pictures of yourself. Yes. What kind of this is not research for being is, an industry this pundit. This is me and my people. What, this is what, stop, what are your ads? Let me see what your ads are. I'm oh, curious. the ads will tell you everything. Okay, let's see. <laughs> no, they won't. They Twenty dollars really and bad. under Ford Flare. Just what I want. Ford cufflinks. Uh, Ford cufflinks. Streetwear men's shoes. There's one with a Loafers. woman. Loafers. There's one I haven't seen it in a while, but uh, there was one that was really. Uh, well, see, I don't see it now. Huh. I often get busty women for some reason yeah, in my ads. There's not one for the deep panties, the, the surplus the deep panties. The deep panties. panties. But, you know what? Panties. If I sign up for that, yeah. if I do order a bra, you know I'll be getting stuff on Facebook about it.
You don't even have to. I'll confuse <laughs> the hell out of them. That's worth doing well, you, just you, for you've that. You've already gone to that true site, and they probably know if you use Facebook Connect to get in there. Yep. And they're going oh, to th- they're going to think that you want that, right. and that's what you're about, and you'll get ads for that. There yeah. is a, there is and a, very can, large women's shoes. There is say. increasingly the sense that maybe ad tracking doesn't work. Maybe customized ads don't work. Um, they don't, well, they don't work on Facebook. Well, GM said they didn't work. I think that's more because GM couldn't figure and out. And then how to make they, it GM, then the next day also pulled out of the Super Bowl. I mean, right. so they're just. I think they're just all idiots. cover because they're out of ad money. <laughs> you know, if somebody told me that the, what GM wanted yeah. to do was a takeover, and Facebook said you can't do a takeover on a takeover is in the uh, banner ad business where you take over a whole page. It's like GM, GM, GM all over the page, and Facebook wouldn't do that. No. And F- GM said, "Well, then we don't know how to use Facebook." If you won't let us do that's, that, but they, but they still maintain their free presence. That's funny, yeah. I mean, they still. Have well, Facebook. I think that's the message uh, that some we're taking from this is Facebook works, but why pay? Right. Just have a f- page, but I don't, Doc. That's not real engagement, and that's kind of what you're saying, isn't it? Well, and, and, and I'm saying several things. One is that I, you know, obviously they're successful at doing what they're doing in in, in terms Facebook of Facebook is yes. To, well, I mean, in terms of the social side of it, there, I mean, that works to the degree that a zillion people are involved in it. But the advertising is actually remarkably bad. It's remarkably off. It is. With, a, with their algorithm supposedly knows about you, it's remarkably off. Most of it's really way off. Right. And, and it's, it's surprising. Now, I've talked to a number of people who have advertised on there and who have said to almost a person that it doesn't work very well, if at all. However, I spoke to somebody today who absolutely swears by it. So... I don't know. I mean, I, I guess in some cases it does. If it's really narrow, if you already if you're already loved to some degree, and you're just trying to enlarge the love that they have for you. In this case, it was a radio station here in Boston. But um, you know, uh, oh, the the the, um, the NPR podcast, Planet Money, had a really good uh, uh, thing on on a uh, a pizza place in New Orleans where they did everything by the book, and they're they're already loved by a zillion people, and they got like not one response, not right. one. They so- paid nothing. Can I have a little rant about Facebook ads here? Yeah. The reason oh. <laughs> Facebook Facebook has two problems with ads. First, on the main site, uh, you don't go to Facebook because you're looking to do research. You go to Facebook to keep up with your friends, and that's why ads don't work. Right. Because I don't care that how much it know how many ads I get for Bonobo's pants, which is all the time. Um, I'm not in the mood to for buy what? clothes. For some, what? Some pants. Pants? Bottomless pants? Is Bonobos. Bottom. Oh, check, what, look what I get. Okay. <laughs> anyway, let me go on. So They got a really confused. They think I want to race in a 13-mile race with a muddy woman who looks somewhat <laughs> who looks somewhat like, I got to say, Raquel Welch. You like muddy women? And then boyfriend wanted, seniorsmeet.com. Oh, gr- good. You're girlfriend good. wanted, seniorpeoplemeet.com. So not only am I old, but apparently I want a boyfriend and a girlfriend, and I want to meet older women, and I want to learn Python. Menage a trois with Python. <laughs> there you go. With a snake. Wow. So you, you, All I right. think you're absolutely they right. They really nailed you. <laughs> really As hard. I was saying. Oh, yes. Nope. So that is problem one. Problem two is they don't make it. It doesn't work on mobile because there's no bandwidth in real estate, and everybody knows that. That's why the, one of the reasons their stock is doing so badly. But where Facebook can win is if they go from advertisements on Facebook to advertisements elsewhere and compete with Google directly for advertisements on the internet to be like AdSense, do an ad network. Well, yeah. that's their future. That's Was where Facebook it, well, has to go. Ew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The that's where couple, the social network. That's where the ew. social proximity will actually work. In the last Facebook. couple of shows, Scoble was on here, and he predicted because he'd seen the the deck. I suppose some magical that some that was all mobile. That was the future of Facebook. Yeah, I, but they haven't I, figured out how to do it. Neither is Google. I'm willing to I'm willing to stipulate that perhaps Mark has some Mark Zuckerberg has some deep plan for monetization but i think it's also possible that you're right that he has no idea what he's doing oh no he that's why he keeps buying mobile companies that's why he bought instagram yeah, no one's ever considered that possibility the instagram is crazy because facebook then three weeks later releases a facebook camera app that's, that's a, you're right that was that's pretty, instagram. that was pretty freaky weird yeah it's like wait a minute you just bought a company for a billion dollars and you were working on a similar product with filters and everything all along what did you get <laughs> This is why they are AOL 2.0. Remember all of the instant messaging companies that AOL bought? It's the same thing. They're just the same. They, they're, they, they're lost. They're wandering yeah. in the desert, lost without any plan. Yeah. Uh, I've also heard that, 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 that Cheryl runs the business side and Zuck runs the tech side. And that for the most part, you know, unless he wants to suddenly in, in, a, in a fit of large S buy a company, he is not involved in the business side of the, of the thing. 
I don't know if that's in, true. In other words, he's not working on monetization. It's not it's right. not largesse. He's buying mobile companies because Facebook desperately needs mobile talent. Right. He's buying yeah. for the people. Yeah. Although a right. billion They're dollars for Instagram people. makes yeah. no sense for by that metric. They got ten are, yeah. people. Yeah. Right. For a hundred million each. That's Twelve. Okay. By the way, Ford has uh, 1.5 million likes on here. General Motors, 340,000. What, what does a like get you? Nothing. Nothing. I, I don't think nothing. it's a thing. You have a bot that creates those I things. I get all these likes. And, uh, and I'll tell you the one thing, and I don't know how valuable it is, but the one thing it gets you is that, in fact, you'll see this right here. It says, uh, well, uh, somewhere it says Robert, uh, Robert, uh, see, okay, one of the people Robert I follow. Robert likes everything. Yeah, but so okay, here's so Jesse, Jesse Stay likes fab.com. So in this ad, I'm getting, there's a little plug from one of my friends, right? So that's one of the things they get, I guess. That's one of those ineffective ads that you're never Yeah, I never, I wouldn't have ever seen that right. if I hadn't actually been looking at it. So, yeah, State, you know, State just, Farm. can't find enough ways to sell out. They, so it's, State Farm apparently wants me to take a job as an insurance agent with them. Well, just in case, a good Apply backup, today, good backup. Achieve unlimited income. Oh, that, unlimited. That's a, that is a lie. <laughs> My <laughs> income, if I were selling insurance, would be unlimited. Or this week's Zazzle bag feed is up. <laughs> I don't, I don't even know what that is. Ooh, spell that. What is it spell? <laughs> I don't know. It's something, uh, apparently. There's, sounds like a disease. It sounds, there's an ad. Somebody bought this. I don't know why. Zazzle bag feed is up. Zazzle bag feed? <laughs> Let the feed? word go forth. From this country uh, to all, the Zazzle bag feed is up. Um, municipal bond suites, $20 and under Ford cufflinks. <laughs> You're right. You're right, Doc. This is junk. <laughs> it's junk. junk. Absolute junk. Junk advertising. Wow. Well, there you go. Here's some interesting news. Fios, Verizon, has yeah. announced that they are going to now offer 300 megabit down, 65 megabit up service. Uh, they didn't announce pricing, but it's leaked out that it will be, if you sign up for two years, $205 a month. For, for how many giga megabits? 300 down, 65 up. What that's can you a do? lot. That's more well, than people need. You can't do need. anything because no server is that Right, fast. exactly. If you have like a family of... Like Maybe that's it. 100. 16 tuplets. And they're all downloading different movies at the same or time. Or you own a condo or an uh, apartment building. This is Verizon Ooh. Fios, the Mormon polygamy edition. <laughs> <laughs> Did, have you been working on that gig? <laughs> no, I just came up with that. Wow. Like that. It came out of my brain. It seemed Actually, it was rehearsed. Their, <laughs> their, their prices, I think, on 15 gigs That's because uh, it was so pat. Yeah, it was too good. Yeah, it I was. I should perhaps was. make it... I should have fumfered around a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. What are you saying? No, I forget. <laughs> John and, I, John and I are having a thing. Just uh, it's ignores. Okay. It's fine. Um, I'm using 25 megabits symmetrical here. It it's nice. Really well. I have to say that their their service has been outstanding. Um, and what do you pay for that? That's 75 bucks a month. Is that what that is? I'm paying 70 a month for 25 symmetrical, but I have no TV. There's no bundle, so we got rid of the TV part, which had an awful UI and we never watched. But right. The, but this is this is really solid. Does Verizon, you, know? you say, or Comcast? This is Verizon FiOS. FiOS. This is FiOS. Oh, He's got FiOS. Yeah. Wow. Turn the camera, look how good that it. looks. Uh, no, that's why it looks so good. Hey, look how good that looks. Yeah. Works great. I it's Ethernet one of the best you've had on the show for And it's the pretty last consistent, year. right? Yeah, it's solid. Yeah. It's solid. Mm. Yeah. And of course, they've stopped developing it, you see, because they did a deal with uh, Comcast that the feds aren't investigating, where they're, they're, no commercial company is developing fiber right now. Isn't that uh, ironic? So, in fact, John, you said this. You said Fios was just going to be a showpiece, that they wouldn't roll it out. They surprised us all. They rolled it out much more widely. But now they've said, we're not going to do any more Fios and sell somebody. It's like a club. You can't go in until somebody goes out. To form a corruption. And it was a deal. You're saying, Doc, it was a deal with Comcast? Well, they're not calling it that, but it was very coincidental. And I'm not remembering exactly the, the thing. But they want, it's a, it's a combination of they want Spectrum for wireless, because that's where they're making the big money right, right. now. and. Right. And the, I guess Comcast was sitting on the spectrum, or somebody was sitting on the spectrum, and and the, but they 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 announced that they were not going to continue developing, rolling out FiOS at the same time as they went for this deal with the with the cable guys. So, it's I mean just watch you know follow the money as the movie said you know that's right. you know and it's all this this backroom dealing and they you know they're all in this thing that Bob Frankson calls the regulatorium you know there's right. it's a, it's a you know, they, they talk about the free market at work. They never met a free market. They own the market. They're right. the zoo. They're, they're zoo animals in a regulatory zoo 
that they run. Right. So, you know, and so and in the meantime, they're at every almost every state. They're lobbying hard to prevent the munis, the municipalities sure. um, from, from doing any kind of a build out. So, so so as a result, nobody's doing any anything other than the carriers and the carriers aren't doing it. So we're falling farther and farther behind the rest of the world. Well, and that's the free market at work. Right? And, and ironically, now uh, these guys are so dependent on this culture of monopoly that they have to be protected. <laughs> that if, that yeah. if we can't allow competition, well, they, they'd go out of business. This is not the free market at work. This is a corrupt system. It's not the free market. If it was the free market, we'd have some, some choices here. Well, it's interesting. What we're seeing, and I hope people remember this, is the exact result of an experiment that was performed on us, the people, about 20 years ago, where our government decided, no, we need to protect these incumbents so that they will build out and we... The premise was yeah. we will get faster, better internet because we're going to protect the incumbents. We're going to give them a chance to make the money back for laying all that copper or laying all that fiber. And in Europe and in Scandinavia and other countries, they didn't do that. And who's got the better internet connection now? And we've, we now know the result. Our Free market works. Yeah, but we don't, and, and that doesn't work here because we don't have it. We didn't have it. We're in the late regular. You can't, but how do you build a government run, you know, internet infrastructure in this country well it's too late now but it was it's always it's been too, too late, late. Now. it's politically impossible here. yeah exactly we, we, it's never, we, don't this, we don't do that yeah in, in the rest of the world there's an understanding that there's a symbiosis between right. government and business and here there's not it's government versus business and That's so right. you get the big policy people on the left and you get the big um business people on the right and neither one of them really want the marketplace to work one doesn't get the marketplace the other gets how big business can run the marketplace and and that's our choice. It's really creepy and bad. Well, and we get the internet we deserve. Well, it's better than no internet. It is. Oh, it's debatable. Yeah. I had a guy call me on the radio show <laughs> who said, I turned off my internet. Can I still get hacked? I said, <laughs> he said, no, you're safe. Congratulations. He could get stuck snake. <laughs> <laughs> you could from a thumb drive. <laughs> he said, are they watching me? Who's they? I don't know. I they said, I don't think they're watching you anymore. don't care. Yeah. I, then I told him, I thought, well, I'm going to... Tell him to do what I do. Put a little piece of gaffer's tape over the camera on your laptop. I ended up, I, I ended up, I ended up deciding hey, to scare hey, this. The, I, have, I have a little page flag, a little green page flag, and I just lay... You actually do that. Not, Look at that. No, not doing twit. There it is. We can't... We can't... Yeah. Let's tell, him, let's tell him we can still see him, just away. to freak him out. You know, by the way, we can absolutely see what <laughs> yeah. you're doing. In fact, that green thing is reflecting your screen. No, actually what it does is it, it looks like you have no clothes on. <laughs> it's an amazing just, product. Just wishful thinking on your part. So. <laughs> oh. I, I ended up, I think I scared the guy. I told him about Van Eck freaking. I said, well, but don't, well, you want to keep your monitor away from the wall because if there's somebody on the other side of the wall, it's very easy for him to pick up what you're doing. <laughs> you said that? I did. <laughs> Unbelievable. Messing with the norms. That's my the idea. Norms. <laughs> the norms. The norms. The norms. The normies. It is true. I'm not kidding. So let's talk about stamps.com, then we'll continue on. We have a vast in studio audience. Doc can't see this, but there are like <laughs> 15, 20, it's 30 a good crowd here. It's a good <clears> crowd. <throat> There's actually women in the audience, which rarely happens. Yeah, we got one, two, three, four. Wow. What happened? I, is this Mother's Day? Uh, yeah, they're all waving. All four of them. There, yeah, that's right. If you're a woman, <laughs> would you please wave? All right, thank you very much. And you, after the show, you can come up and get the panties from uh, Ray. I should have brought them with. You should have auctioned them I, off. I should have, I know. <laughs> yeah. We should get that drone I camera. I think they were sized for the D attendees, which were all guys, Ooh. so I don't think they'd fit any of the women who were here. Size D panties. I think we have a show. D, it was, yes, the D conference. <laughs> let's, talk about, let's talk about stamps.com. They've had the lower third up, and the guys at stamps.com are saying, take it down, take it down, <laughs> take it down. He's talking about panties. Um, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, when's the last time you went to the post office, John? Uh, a couple of days ago. Yeah, it's fun, isn't it? Well, I had one of those big giant boxes. Right, and they won't let you put that in the mail. You can't, your mail carrier won't take it. You can't put it in the mailbox because it's too big. Did you know that if you had used stamps.com, they would take it? They would come and they would get it? You could actually schedule a pickup free from the Postal Service? Did you know that? Count me in. <laughs> I think you should. This is an amazing thing. You don't have to go to the post office anymore. You, you print your own postage. You can print it right on the envelope, which looks really good uh, with your logo and everything. You can also uh, mail packages. The rule, what? 
What is this Welcome Leo Laporte listeners well, on their homepage? That's because I, I, if I, I don't know, somehow it thinks that I'm Leo Laporte. But let me, if I can go to the front page. <laughs> See, every time it does this, this is not what you will get if you go to stamps.com. You'll have to do some some special things to get that. Let me tell you about that. You're going to see there's a there's a microphone on the right. You click that, and you enter in the offer code TWIT. And what happens magically, that special offer on the front page is $80. It goes to $110 because we give you more postage coupons, $55 of free postage coupons. We give you a free digital scale worth 50 bucks. You just pay shipping and handling. You get a supply kit. You get a four-week trial. The scale is cool because they plug it in to your computer, and then you throw the thing on there, and the, and the software does it all. In fact, this is really kind of a, it's our typing elimination program, because if you use eBay or Amazon as a seller, it'll just f fill out the forms for you and print it all. If you do international mail, it's the same thing. You don't have to type in anything. Um, <clears throat> it will, if you use QuickBooks, it'll take your address book from QuickBooks, and you do invoices, but just, you don't have to type in. We use it, we actually ended up buying uh, two scales, We have because we were fighting over it. Stamps.com, it is a great deal, and this special offer is available right now if you go to Stamps.com. Don't look at me like what that. What are I you shipping? Like what are you that. shipping? Um, stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> Things and stuff. Stuff. What do we ship, John? We ship, we ship stuff back. Panties. We ship panties. <laughs> we just ship stuff. <laughs> we, people buy stuff from us. Stickers. We got a little factory in the basement. We do got a little piecework stuff. We do, uh, you know, things. All the fan mail. Fan mail. We, we, we send stuff out. We do. Uh, actually, we ship back everything that we get if a review for before you buy it. We have to ship back. So we ship stuff. We do. I hadn't really thought about the panty thing yet. But that might, that's an interesting. <laughs> you can make line. some money. That's a sideline. You know, is it the word panty? Twit panties that makes it so compelling. Just panty. If we call them pants, like underpants, that wouldn't be so interesting. I think they should have their own name. They should. They, they shouldn't do. be so panties. diminutive of pants. Panties. No, 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 no. They shouldn't be. What do you think they should be? No. It's something else. Something that is <laughs> lady, lace, lady, lace, lady, lacy and frilly and beautiful trousers. and wonderful. How about lady trousers? That's a diminutive. Yes. You've been watching too much Top Gear. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's a Top Gear? Lady trousers. Sounds like something you see here in it Top does. Gear. Yeah. You should call them lady trousers. <laughs> you know, it's the Queen's Jubilee. What does that mean? Is there, a, are, is there anybody from the Knickers Commonwealth yeah. in the uh, studio uh, today? Anybody from New Zealand, Australia, Canada, the American Samoas, anywhere? Where this are you from, sir? So, you don't know about the Queen's Jubilee? This is a big deal. You see the picture of her firing a, gun, a uh, like a rifle? They had to lower the river for the Queen because her boat was so high it couldn't go under the new Millennium Bridge. So they actually lowered the river. That's power. It's a big boat. She, the Jubilee is what her is her fiftieth year in power. Sixty. Sixty. Wow. So it's her Diamond Jubilee. She's been on the throne for 60 years. That's amazing. And she doesn't look at me. My advice, over. prunes. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I got a groan. <laughs> I got a like groan. Like look, look at, All right. Look at the hat. <laughs> Jeez, that is was that a lame. mushroom? What is that? <laughs> she was playing Mario. She's waving from the Royal Barge on the River <laughs> Thames. On a flotilla. This is, this, I love this. You know why I love this? Do you love this? Because it's, it's medieval. It brings back, it just reminds me of the good old days. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, the plague. Those were the good old days. Uh, oh, that mm. the country's under adult supervision. Actually, the, so that's called. The, the Queen's flotilla was taken, the idea for it was taken from an old painting. Did we finish the stamps.com ad? <laughs> Long ago. <laughs> it was an interesting segue. It was a four-day diamond jubilee. Uh, so they were trying to figure out how do we make this really cool how do we celebrate there's nothing like you know a river full of boats with the queen on a royal barge at the front <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh this was a three century old painting of a previous royal pageant that they uh they uh no, they copied copied check this out that's my that's my idea of a she's queen. shooting a cannon now, that's, Holy a, that's that's a, like a machine gun where'd you find that uh, if I search for Queen Elizabeth shoots machine gun? Yeah, Queen <laughs> Rifle queen? Jubilee. I don't know if this is this real or not. You might be able to get a, a, <laughs> I saw it on, uh, an animated GIF. That'd be kind of cool. Um, yeah, here it is. The Queen's Diamond Jubilee celebration. 62 gun salute. No, it's not her firing. That's her firing a gun. I'm sorry we're not plugged into my computer. I wish the hell we could see that. Chat room will give it to me. Yeah. Chat room, I want a picture. This is so much. This is so cool. Watch this. Chat room. Yes, Leah. I want to. <laughs> that's just my imagination. 
I want a picture of the Queen firing a rifle, Chadroom. On the Jubilee. On the Jubilee. Working. With an umbrella. Working. Working. Look, look at this picture. Working. Okay, you're not that fast. I can't see. We can't show people. We, you're pulling up pictures on your computers. It's leaving the audience out. Processing. There, look. And here it telegraph. is. Ladies and gentlemen, just from doing it the to be Telegraph. Annoyed. Annoying. There it is. The Queen. Jesus Christ. <laughs> How awesome is that? <laughs> you do not want to get her angry. Wow. <laughs> you do not want to get. But I'm glad she's wearing white gloves. What if gloves. that thing kick, has a kick While she's she, doing? Now are you proud to be from New Zealand? I bet you are, sir. <laughs> You're a proud You would Kiwi. never see Obama doing that. Actually, it lost Michael Dukakis the election wearing the little tank helmet. Yeah, he that did. was a big mistake. you yeah. got to be careful. He didn't idiot, have though, her steely why. look of determination no. and rage. You know what? She could get elected president yeah. right now. We're sorry, Your Majesty. We as Jay Spin says, that's a fake photo. No. no. I don't care. It's from I, the I Telegraph. Just I just don't care. I love it. It's from the Telegraph. That's not fake. She's squinting. She's squinting. She's aiming. All right. Or like cheek well, that's hand. all I have to say. Trigger hand looks great. It's way old? Well, it's... All right, let's get back to the story. Tech news. Google promises to unveil the... You're going to this event. The next dimension of Google Maps. Yeah, right before Apple releases how it's going to change, divorce itself get rid from of Google it. forever. Yeah. Yeah, so Google is having an event. I don't know what they're going to do. You think do. it's a response to Apple dropping Google Maps from iOS? I, I don't, it's, they're all competing with each other. You know, navigation and location, mobile uh, location finding is everything. What could you do? I mean, uh, you know, I'm tempted to go to this event, but I just don't know. Is there really, is it one of those events you go to and you go, well, that wasn't that interesting? It's going to be 3D. Uh, they could make the product better in Android. Um, I mean, it's all about mobile. It's all about Android because they can't do anything on iOS because Apple's going to drop right. them. So they've got to make Android maps better but they're already pretty freaking awesome so i don't know what they're going to do it, it, they're already making them better because they're they're doing this passive aggressive thing where for example you don't get um verbal instructions on on ios you do get right. them on android right. you don't get the revised recalculating thing that you get with most gps's on ios you only get it on android you think already. that's so google being and passive already, aggressive and or apple? Sure it is. I, I mean, maybe, I, i'd be if apple's doing that i'd be surprised and they're already um, traffic aware are. Yeah, the traffic aware thing, which I use, yeah. is amazing. This now, is the best it? navigator you can get. This you, phone, I know you're a big fan. This phone, as old as it is, has not got a single I, scratch on it. Is that passive aggressive, or is that Google just favoring their own platform? You know, the other thing they have been doing is they're doing more indoor mapping. So for businesses, like in airports especially. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool. But uh, know, when we were at uh, uh, CES, they had maps of the trade show mm -hmm. on Google Maps. So you'd walk in and you could continue to use I think maps. maybe they were maps of inside your body. Mm. Of the, the synthetic biology guys, too. One thing I do, I am very happy about. They did put Google Places in the maps now, but now they've added the Zagat guides free. Right. That's cool. They bought, they bought Zagat. Zagat. Yeah. yeah. They bought Zagat. I think that's cool. In fact, um, I had a... I'd been paying for Zagat. Is it Zagat or Zagat? I don't know. It's Zagat. Zagat? doesn't matter. Nina, Nina I met Nina. Zagat Zagat used to, Nina uh, Zagat once, and I believe, if I recall correctly, she introduced herself as Nina Zagat, but I could be wrong. It could be. It's pronounced Whatever. Whatever. It's our day. Whatever. It won't be in business in five years. No, because Google bought it. That's one Thanks, reason, Ross. and Yelp is still better. Zagat. I was right. Zagat? Nina was right with her own name. Zagat? Rhymes with cat, like the cat. Zagat. But we're asking it's where the Zagat. emphasis is. Is it's it the Zagat. beginning Zagat. or the end? It's Zagat, Zagat, or Zagat. One of the three. <laughs> Zagat, <laughs> Zagat, the uh, back channel says. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I, they actually gave me a free guide because I had some subscription money left over. Oh, so that's like nice. That. Yeah. yeah. They said, would mm. you like a free guide? I said, yes. And the one I ordered, you're going to love this. Baltimore. The, yeah. How'd you know? It's a good city. Wonderful city. I like the waterfront. Wouldn't go inland. If I were you, did you see the new Chromebooks? Yes. Do what? <laughs> they have new ones. Better, stronger, faster. Yep. Better, stronger, Just faster. Just as relevant. Get this: no longer the Atom processor. Now they've got Celerons. Celery. Celerons. Celerons. Celery. Chips. I don't even know where they got them from. Are they does Intel? There's still a make there's them? a room full of Celeron chips That's somewhere. Where they got them. They, They're old. They raided the room. Yeah. They gave them a deal. They don't have uh, core whatevers. No, they're Celerons. Jeez, oh, Louise, Google. Nobody's <laughs> going to buy these things. <laughs> yeah, the, I tried one. We have one in the, in the lab. The netbook has not died. I know. I just gave one to my intern. He said, do you have a laptop I could use for the summer? I said, yeah. Here. I still I still like Chromebooks. And he quit. 
<laughs> He's gone. I don't know where he went. I still like Chromebooks because you can give one to a guest or a five-year-old, and they cannot get into your settings they, they and screw it up. It. They just close it and say, I don't want this. Well, they can, <laughs> they can write emails. That's about all pretty bad. Right. They say, Angry Birds? No. Sorry. Yeah. Actually, it does have Angry Birds. It, it does, does play well, Angry Birds. At least the old one ones played poorly. Thing. The new one's played a little bit better. Yeah. Huh. So uh, we were ta we've talked for years about the Google Book deal. So that's how long I've known you. It's been going on for years. Google scanned books. The authors and publishers said, whoa, wait a minute, you can't scan those books. Right, and the irony, of course, is that before this all began, everybody was idealistically talking about how great it would be to digitize the world's books. Google except somebody Go wrote them. Yes, except the authors. Oh. Right. Uh, so it turns out, uh, finally, a federal judge ruled this week that uh, authors and photographers could go forward with a class action lawsuit over scanning mm. with uh, Google Books. Um, they asked, uh, the, Google asked the judge to remove the Authors Guild and the Photographers Group from the lawsuit. They said a class action wasn't appropriate because many authors were actually in favor of scanning. Right. And they should be. And they should be. Would, well, how do you feel? Okay, both of you are authors. How do you, I mean, Doc... Don't you worry that Google will scan your books and then make them available? I, I would hope they do. I mean, I can tell you how handy it is to, when doing research to be able to look inside a book. Mm -hmm. And I've still bought a zillion of them. And Clue Train, by the way, still sells well. It's been it's online for the, free for it's, ever. It's been online for free for years. Yeah. In fact, it, it's being online for free has probably helped sales. I agree. Uh, so, so I think it's. I, I, I think I understand their their complaint, but I think it's a it's misplaced. I agree with that. It's a complete uh, misunderstanding of the way technology works. Mm. So it's the, the usual case of the existing... The norms. The norms. Not but understanding should, how technology works. But shouldn't the norms still be allowed to file suit if they want to? I just want to go on record of course. that nobody yeah. okay. watching, listening, or in any way involved with the show is a norm. And I want to <laughs> Except there's a guy in the second right. row, Norm a, Johnson. Norm, I'm not right. talking about you, Norm. Google has applied for some new TLDs. You know, we, the, the ICANN uh, uh, folks have added uh, arbitrary, anything you want, TLDs. Mm -hmm. There are lots, though. It's like, what is it, Doc, 150000 That like was that. 250 Leo. It's expensive. I can get that Leo. So Google's getting Doc .google. They're going to apply. Why? Because then you could go to google.google. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, does it? Let's go to google.google. What, google. what if they well, you went to com.google? That would be a good and one. And you'd have a backwards Google. Yeah. <laughs> this is they for got, dyslexics. <laughs> they got they got Google dot docs. That would make sense for your Google Docs dot docs. Or doc, you might want that doc 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 docs. doc doc. Oh, no, I wanted that. I, dot doc I, docs. You know, until Google Docs came along, I was among the top docs, and I'm gone now. Oh, so yeah. hate that. That Twitter did that to me. Uh, yeah. Dot YouTube. In case you didn't know where you were going, to see those crotch shot videos. Angry, mm. annoying orange. And this is my favorite, dot LOL. That's great. And <laughs> cheeseburger's got to be in the running for that one. They want to register dot LOL. OMG. Is it a new... I'm going to get OMG. Hang on. Oh, I think AOL has OMG. <clears throat> ah, dang. Hmm. WTF, can I get that one? Yes, dot WTF. Yeah, yeah. That's good. I like it. Dot Rafe. You should have dot Rafe. I almost got Rafe.com, but that's a stupid luggage. You know, Doc, if you register dot Doc, not dot Docs... That yeah. you could get some traffic. Yeah, I, 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 I missed it. I wanted to do that, and I missed it by, by not much. Didn't have a quarter million back. lying around? Yeah, and that was back when it was 75 bucks from Internet. But Oh, you mean there is well, actually a dot doc? I think, uh, no, no, not a dot doc. There was a doc dot, you know. That oh, I doc to dot, the, yeah. Doc I should have gotten yeah. Leo dot, but, it you know, been, yeah. 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 If we only knew, if wishes were fishes. Yeah, you really. were around at the beginning, doc. You should have known this. Yeah, I, I did. In fact, I, I actually thought that it would be a great business to go into the, you know, snarfing up a lot of domain names and selling them for a lot of money. But I thought it'd be very scammy and it is a crappy scammy. business to be in. It and is. so yeah. there it is. You'd be scamming the, yourself all the way to the bank. Yeah, right. especially with yeah. art.com. I remember having that guy in my... Uh, How much did he sell it for? One million dollars. Arts. And who's art. using it? Nobody. Art.com is. You can go to art.com. It's, it's a huge website. For what? Art? Yeah, for posters oh, you're right. frames. Posters, art, prints, framed art. Huh. Yeah, they paid a million dollars for art. A million dollars. A million dollars. And yet, I think Zappos.com probably does a lot more traffic. Probably yeah, probably. More yeah I know, it'd be a little creative. Generic is cheap. not is not what you want. Sex.com, what do you get? I don't know what. Go check know. it out. I've Put never, it up on the I've screen. I've never tried it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, actually, Alexis Madrigal, who I really like, she writes, is a she or a he? 
It's a he, actually. Really? Writes for, uh, he's a senior editor at The Atlantic. Writes for uh, The Atlantic Magazine. Has been doing some really good pieces. He's got an article on the case for Facebook. Yeah, he's he's making a point that the stock is not that bad an idea because Facebook is 20% of the internet. Which it is. is. Which is a, which is a very valid argument. It may, we not, may not like that. But it's an interesting argument. Yeah, it may. It, it was an, over, it was was an overpriced IPO. People are all up in arms because the stock went down and Facebook managed to extract the maximum possible value they could from the IPO. By the way, Which good job, Which is what they're supposed Facebook. to do. That's, that the, was, they that's were, the, their CFO deserves a pat right. on the back. Now, it's not good overall for other IPOs, but... No, uh, you know who's mad? I, the speculators are mad because they, the Muppets didn't make it pop. And if the right. Muppets had made, they'd made a lot of money. They would so have made more, and then they could do a secondary for even more money. They were hoping that there'd be this big retail, uh, Jim Cramer was calling it, over the transom purchases by people, normal people who didn't realize norms. the Facebook norms. <clears throat> the, they call them Muppets, which is actually probably norms. better. I'm going to call them Muppets. So that's what they call us. Not you, because you're sophisticated, but me, they call them Muppet. Because they were hoping the Muppets would come in and bring that stock price to 40 50 60 bucks. Mm -hmm. They could sell before the end of the day, get out, watch it crash, and that's why they're really upset, uh, I think. Yeah. They didn't get the pop. It shouldn't be, should be Muppets. It should be idiots. They're, yeah. they're muggles. They're muggles. muggles. The, the, muggles. Muggles. the Muggles. The Muggles. And the Muggles didn't come through. The Muggles didn't come through. And NASDAQ kind of screwed it up because they delayed it. They, they didn't give them a chance to. They Well, NASDAQ, they, there they, was they more traffic in Facebook shares than there has been ever for any stock. I, then NASDAQ normally has an entire day for all its stocks. Wow. Facebook shares were that many more. So the Muppets did buy, but I guess the Muppets didn't buy. And enough. then they sold, and then they bought, they and then they sold. Yeah, 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 it was yeah. a disaster. Yeah. They all just right. didn't have the bandwidth. Anyway, Facebook is still a valuable company, as, as Alex points company. out. You know, they, they have uh, lock-in. They have mm -hmm. photo sharing. They have everybody who's connected to whom. Um, and they'll eventually have an ad network, I believe, you know, outside of Facebook. So it's still a valuable company. The question is, is it as valuable to the tune of $38, even $30 a share? And Well, here's an, and, you know, I'm going to defer to you, John, because you actually understand this stuff. You talk to Andrew all the time. You do, do you still do the show with Andrew? Yes. So you know about... dhunplugged.com. You know about stock stuff. <laughs> After you go to noagendashow.com, go to dhunplugged.com, and then you can go to channeldvorak.com, and then uh, dvorak.org slash na. So one of the things people were uh, complaining about was that... It's pretty uh, good. Fate, very nice, nicely done. <laughs> well, I was just filling the just, dead air. Very, very nicely done. <laughs> One of the things people were complaining about was that Facebook's price to earning, its valuation of the stock market yeah. was overblown. Yeah, right totally. now, it's at eighty-eight bucks. I think at the peak it was one hundred ten bucks. Price to earning, not bucks, but a price. A price the to PE ratio. PE ratio. PE ratio. Amazon is one hundred seventy-one. The PE is ratio is one hundred seventy-one. I don't think. So. And so that's what I find interesting is that nobody's saying anything about Amazon being overvalued, and they're worth twice as much. But that that, but that, that may be a reflection of a bad quarter. That's and, not no, necessarily no, no. Uh, what it what it really. Economic no, metrics economics. don't apply really this early on in a company. It's brand new. We don't yeah. know what it's right. going to be. The question is, could you grow that much? But if Amazon's worth one hundred seventy-one dollars, earning, no. It's, yeah, but that that may be to do with the earnings of one it has specific been for a long quarter. Time. No, no. Well, I don't know. It has been for a while. Oh, you're right. Earnings have been down. You're right. Maybe it is. Maybe it's just some of these things, you know, right. you know are right. just look at transitory. Wow, is that P to E? Yeah. Google is thirteen. No, Apple's Apple. thirteen. Yeah, well, it's thirteen. Yeah. yeah, well, that's about right. Google's around that too. Funny. That's yeah. because they don't expect the, the the price. The earnings per share should reflect the growth rate of the company. These are older speaking. companies. These are older. So companies. 100 to one as old as Apple means it's going to be doubling Google every year in uh, in in uh, earnings. So if the thing's 13, it's pretty much means the company's stabilized. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not going to double, although you don't know. You don't know if you. If they come up with that TV set, you which a lot of people order. don't think it's going to happen. Some people do. I don't. I'm very skeptical. I'm very skeptical. much. I'm your spectacle. <laughs> yes. Good one, you got me. Put those spectacles on. Rafe Needleman, he does the reporters' roundtable, and he's good. He's got he's got the AP style guy in his head. John C. Dvorak, channel Dvorak com. Doc Searles at doc. No, is it doc. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. That'll take you to the Berkman Center and Doc's blog. We're brought to you uh, this week by Audible.com. You know what I was listening to on Audible? And I really, and I think it's apropos, I was li listening to a brand new history of the Second World War. Hmm. And you were mentioning duplicity mm -hmm. and how uh, you wouldn't expect a government to, 
you know, state its intentions. In fact, that some of the things governments say may be intended to mislead. Yes. Yes. Hitler did that. They all did. <laughs> Hitler. <laughs> Hitler. Argument's did that. over. It's over. Yep. Godwin's law has been invoked. This was. This is a. Re, I, there's so many great uh, books on Audible.com. Over a hundred thousand now. And you know, I was listening to Stephen King, and I wanted something, an antidote, not an antidote, an anodyne, something to refresh the palate, an amuse bouche, in between books of the stand, which is a very, very long book. So I got this uh, new book. You have a five-minute commute to this office. I know, I know. I don't listen very much. It's called The Storm of War, A New History of the Second World War. It's actually great. It's fascinating. I've even My son's even in listening to this. He's learning. So, you know, this is interesting. He's learning more from listening to books as I drive him to school than he learns in school, I think. Well, yeah, it's a public school, right? No, no, he goes to a very fancy, expensive school. Same thing. It's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, they're smoking pot, basically. Is what they that's do. good. Yeah, the teachers go, hey, you want to light up before the class? <laughs> no, they don't do that. They don't. That's wrong. I shouldn't have said that. I'm on the board of trustees. I'm going to be fired. <laughs> <laughs> you you just dig a hole for yourself. And the name That's of great. that school, Hogwarts. Yeah. So, <laughs> but back to audible.com. Yeah, you got out of it. Yeah, I did get out of it. So do you guys uh, listen to audio books? Anybody? Uh, anybody? anybody? No, all the hands went up. More podcasts. Yeah. yeah. Doc, is your book, I wonder, let me look. Is your? Yeah, there's an, there's a, 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 an audio book. Awesome. version of it because i recorded it i spoke to i spoke it so i don't know Ugh. if that's the audible version or if that's some other version but i it, there's definitely an audiobook that version seems of, like a lot of work there is uh brian a morris it does is. the it took two days it is it so took two days yeah um yeah it took two days of let me, see, let me search it, for the intention economy most every audiobook that comes out is on audible but if it, apparently yours is not however clue train is which is a great yeah, lesson. Train is, yeah. yeah, with all four authors reading their parts. Yeah, of the, really? of, the, of the original version. Now, the 10th anniversary, there's a, a voiceover guy. Oh, so there's two of them. Yeah, yeah. there's a 10th anniversary edition that has uh, new chapters by the four authors and then an additional chapter by J.P. Rangaswamy. Um, oh, he's great. I like J.P. And, uh, and uh, Dan Gilmore and Dan's Jake great. McKee. Oh, what fun. Yeah. So uh, I tell you, you can you can get inspired. You can learn. Oh yeah. So there's the one narrated. There's several of these on here. Interesting. You can learn. I don't know which ones are Audible though. I mean, are are, are the Audible company? I, I don't. I'm not without looking at it. I don't know. Audible uh, makes deals often with uh, everybody else. So that that's the thing is almost every audio book is on Audible. I bet yours will be. It just isn't yet. That would be my guess. It could be. I get little notes from, from the publisher on what deal's been done with who, right. so I'm not sure what's right. been done with Audible yet. Paris, my sweet. A year in the city of light and dark chocolate. Sounds good. If these walls could talk... Now, see, this is the other kind of book I love to listen to. An intimate history of the home. These are kind of like sociology meets history. I love that stuff. I love it. Audible.com. I'll tell you what. Go to audible.com slash twit and the number two. Twit two, one word. And you can sign up for the Platinum account. That's two books a month. First month's free. First two credits are free. In most cases, that's two books. Although if you're doing Game of Thrones, each of those books, because it's so long, is two credits. Mm. So you could get one Game of Thrones or you could get two other books. Um, just really, the new uh, Lyndon Johnson uh, uh, biography by Robert Caro is out now. I love this stuff. Listen to the first uh, couple of volumes on Audible. Audible Master of the Senate. Ooh, that was good. Audible.com slash twit2. Give it a try today. You will like it. Uh, let us move on here. What other big stories are going on this week? Ivy Bridge laptop chips are out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh. Yeah. Um, the SpaceX cargo ship is back. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Space Final travel Elon is Elon cool. Musk, a.k.a. Um, Tony Stark. <laughs> he is. He's Tony Stark. Has uh, has made a rocket and put his own capsule on it, you know, which right. went up to the, to the space station. Dragon. Which they then grappled with a robot arm because a source tells me getting approval for automatic docking software would have involved basically every nation that has an interest in the space station Wait a minute, approving you mean they could have done that, but they didn't? They just said, well, it's we'll grapple a, you? Yes. It's Newtonian physics. How hard can it be? Right. You know, but if you have a mistake, then you punch a hole in the ISS. You punch a hole in the ISS and people die, so that's not right. good. So they grappled with the robot arm. They opened it up, and uh, this is, and then it just splashed down. And it was perfect recovery, perfect mission. It was. It's only its second flight. 
Yeah, and this thing they're they're trying to make this um, space capsule, uh, you know, human rated. So this cargo ship that went up, the, wow. the driverless minivan, will eventually have people in it. Up wow. to seven. Up to how many? Seven. Wow. And Elon Musk is doing now. Is he? He's spending the big profits from Tesla. No. PayPal, then Tesla, now SpaceX. Wow. Tony Stark. They banking yeah. cars. What's next? When he builds a, when he builds a giant tower in New York City. <laughs> and where does he launch these things from? Where? A secret island base. No. Yes. Well, original. With the original his white SpaceX cat rockets. in his lap. Yeah, that's right. Mr. And it goes down Mr. under Biggles the water wife. and then comes back up. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. No. It opens up the top of the volcano and the rocket goes out. Yeah. Yep. Oh, you guys are teasing me now. Only slightly. Wow. That is that is pretty cool. I know people were watching this as if it were like, you know, an, a, a big deal. It is a big deal okay. to have a pri private industry get up into orbit. I mean, previously. It is. It's amazing. It's um, amazing. Previously, private indus non private industries like Boeing well, and Lockheed, these non private companies are obviously government owned. A it startup. You're uh, right. You're right. And we have private companies have launched, obviously, spaceship spacecraft into not just orbit, but geosynchronous so far, far away. But to have. A, a startup interface with the space program means we hope that NASA can actually do what it does, which is push the boundaries. That the boundary is no longer getting things into orbit; it is now going to Mars, going to the asteroids, and we can leave uh, getting to orbit to smaller, way more cost-effective private companies. Cheap, yes. Some good yeah, news. Actually, Elon wants to mine asteroids too, and he wants to make that private. They're doing a company. That's right. That's good luck with Gates that. Invest in that and yeah. others, uh, and I think that's a yeah. well. That's a great idea. They've got an asteroid in mind that has a ton of. Uh, Platinum. platinum. I think it is platinum. Yeah. Yeah. On it. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. We yeah. need that. Fiasco. We need it to build iPhones. Fiasco. Oh, yeah. Why? The mining an asteroid, it's crazy. No, it's a great idea. <laughs> it's a great idea. You don't think that'll happen? No. We got to get Jerry Pornell on. He'll tell you. He'll talk you down. <laughs> it's good stuff. What do you think? We, had, we did a special, which you can watch, by the way. Uh, it was fascinating before the show. About uh, with a guy who had done a great uh, talk on a uh, solve for X, the Google uh, uh, talks about a genome compiler, and he's now shipping it. It's software that you then can take bits and pieces of different genomes and create a new genome. And then he brought a friend who's making a genome printer, basically a maker bot for for genes that you would then inject in cells, and the cells would create the thing. Like he wants to do a Kickstarter project for glowing trees. He says it's easy. You take an oak tree, yeah. inject some glowworm DNA. Boom! Yeah, and it's like a 3D, a 3D printer for a new genome. Let's do it. Pretty these, cool. These guys, I'm sitting here, I'm thinking... Mm, I liked it. This mm. is a revolution. We're sitting next to these... These guys could be changing everything in 10, ten years. The, uh, the trees could be glowing. You could what have three could, arms. Possibly. Could. What could possibly go wrong? Yes. What? I although exactly. we, I, although what that said, that said the same so thing cool. is true with private space, industry, with you know, space, asteroid mining... Print your own genome. A lot of things can go wrong. A lot of things will go wrong. A lot of things need to go wrong for us to go forward. It's called evolution. That's right. <laughs> it's exactly what it's called. <laughs> evolution. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, we made a Twit Special 126 if you want to see it. It was actually fascinating. Good news. ACTA Treaty may be on the way down. Now, we, we signed it in the U.S. President Obama signed it. This is that anti-counterfeiting treaty that has so many bad things in it, it's almost hard to list them all. Uh, but the European Union will be voting on it in July, and so far, three different parliament committees have rejected it. It has to get passed by every country in the European Union. Uh, the Industry Committee, the Civil Liberties Committee, and the Legal Affairs Committee all registered its approval. It's not over yet, but the fat lady's warming up. <laughs> it could be good news. Okay. Just thought I'd pass yep. on. Well, we've talked a lot about ACTA and how bad it is. and It's a bad ACTA. It's a bad ACTA. Maybe there's some, <laughs> maybe there's something, something good going here. Um, Wi-Fi and cellular data will account for 60% of all Internet traffic by the year 2016. Mm. Mm. That's funny. Not a surprise. Wi-Fi, cellular, that's 60%. Uh, Netflix has uh, something like 80% of all traffic. There's Facebook has left. 20%. We're already at 200%. <laughs> Some of that could be going over Wi-Fi or uh, 3G, and that's all. It's just, you know. And it has to because the home connections are going to be not improve. Right. That's right. That may be where the future lies. There are two new elements on the periodic table. I know you're excited about this. The International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. I love that. I want to join. 
Uh, they're man-made elements. They were synthesized in Dubna, Russia. I'm skeptical. <laughs> no. So were the guys at Lawrence Livermore National Labs just down the street. They were synthesized. Of course there they'd well. be skeptical. And they, 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 they're they, the ones who they do all this. They confirmed it. Well, um, one of them is called... Livermorium or whatever it is. Then. Livermorium, honoring Lawrence Livermore National that, Labs. They did that, really they bad. Did that to get to, to <laughs> approve it. And it's like the Leo Laporte Award. Florovium. You'd give if I started the Leo Laporte Award. I would approve that. You would. I'm Leo Laporte, and I approve that message. Mm -hmm. Florovium. It'll be uh, the symbol would be F I. The advantage of a Livermorium sandwich is that the <laughs> element only lasts for like a nanosecond and then it, it decays and it you don't decays, have to eat it. Leaving 20 protons. That's right. Just yeah. lying around on the table and your mother Swords, will say, mustardium. clean up the protons. You yeah, mustardium. That's what we need. <laughs> science, as long as we're in the science department, has confirmed there is an old person smell. I can believe that. <laughs> Like closer to not taking enough showers. That's right. I smell it right now. Yeah, it's very funny. <laughs> in a, in a, <laughs> the back channel wasn't. It's the your upper on lip. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Researchers have confirmed for the first time that older people have a recognizable body yeah. odor that cannot be fully explained by grooming diet. The or science is in. Science is the in. Science is in. And, and you're so lucky that I'm not there, I guess. <laughs> We're all old people except for Rafe, I'm who's old. going to be soon. I'm very old. It's getting uh, older by the minute on this show. Old by association. Well, that's what Facebook says. They have to look at the ads. Apparently, young people are able to just sniffing. Uh, identify. Well, they can hear a lot of weird stuff, these young people. These young people. I hear they hear tones. We can't. That's what I understand. And they can smell us coming a mile away. <laughs> just like dogs. Just like dogs. I knew I didn't like young people. All federal agencies must have an API. What? Decrees the president. He doesn't, then cool. he doesn't know what an API is. <laughs> Executive order 1,003, no, 13,500, he's, boy, he's been busy, 13,571 requires executive departments and agencies to identify ways to use innovative technology to streamline delivery of services, lower cost, increase delivery service time, and improve the customer experience. Barack Obama has directed federal agencies to deploy web APIs. Why? Open government, baby. Deploy the APIs. <laughs> I mean, it must mean something different. So I think it must. <laughs> he doesn't say if their data has to be like. Well, I think it is about. Clean. I think it is about open government. It's about yeah, data. yeah. It's about what they call smart disclosure. Get ready. Here is the oh, uh, okay. here is the federal API. This one is the trick list. is in the implementation on yeah. this one, obviously. But it it is really cool if all these government agencies, which are taking our money and money nobody has, and to collect data, which is what they all do, they do these surveys and collect all this data, if we could then get that data, well, we wouldn't need Wolfram Alpha, I agree. would we? No. We would no, just go and get it. Great thing. This is a list from apievangelist.com. He has put check boxes uh, next to all of the agencies that have a digital strategy and X's next to all the agencies that do not. It looks like more X's than anything. I'm looking for a check box. I don't see any. I don't see a check box. Ah, ah. uh, the U Department of Agriculture has a digital strategy. Yep. Two of them. Yeah, they're trying Three to of them. monitor all the cow <laughs> poop. <laughs> it's all the Department of Agriculture. Um, so that's, oh, Commerce. Commerce has a digital strategy. Several. Several. Um, still Commerce. It's got the Department of Defense at mypay.gov. MyPay.gov. There's a digital strategy there. See you can go. MyPay.gov is. Go to MyPay.gov. You can find out what your pay grade is. Apparently. That's, That's a cool. we need a digital strategy for this. Yeah, healthfinder.gov has a digital strategy. Anyway, it's not not My looking good. Gov. The president's going to have to work hard. He's going to have to get his hands there and do some coding. They need a hackathon at the White House. <laughs> That's a good idea, actually. And that is a good idea. My pay. Yeah, hmm. MyPay.com. Has your email address? This is how you get your money from it the. It, it, it redirects to mypay.dfast.mil. <laughs> I got to tell you. <laughs> That is such an up-to-date... I wonder if that's responsive design on that site. That looks so up-to-date. And I particularly like the clip art stolen from Facebook in the upper right-hand corner. Does not that look like the original Facebook page? I'm surprised to say a Mark Zuckerberg production at the bottom. <laughs> it does look like it. 
Cell phone plans, according to Randall. I love Randall Stevenson, the CEO of AT and T. He's just become a, a he's wealth. A, he's a card. He's a card. <laughs> Cell phone plans could be data only in as short as two years. Yep. Wow. Some anyway, right? Yeah. Hmm. So you could get a you could get a phone with no uh, voice minutes on it. Right. That would be that. That I have one. It's called my old iPhone three. I think a lot of people want that. Just uses my Wi-Fi. I think kids rarely make calls anymore. They text each other. It'd be all you need. They're not even Facebook. We have a no Facebook phone pretty soon too. Yeah, we may. That have would a, be an innovation. Could, a, fa a phone with no phone Facebook. Like I agree with that. Three gigs. You know, it's good for three gigs, and you throw it away. Oh wow, a burner phone that's data yeah. only. John would use that. Well, yep. Finally, uh, might want to tune in. I don't know how Tom missed this in this week ahead, but Venus is going to... Well, he's right back there asking. Tom, did you know that Venus is going to transit the sun on Tuesday? No, Leo. I didn't know that. <laughs> it's uh, it, it ha It's been a hundred years since it happened, and it won't happen again for another 105. Just So everybody make sure uh, Tuesday night to stare into the sun at about 6 p.m. <laughs> exactly. And look for a little black My dot that is not eyes. your eyeballs frying. This is not what we call a total eclipse. It's a dot. It's a small little small dot. Small dot. It's, it's, when it's, a 747 yeah. flies across the sun, it's better it's entertainment. Better. I know. Venus will fail to eclipse the sun. <laughs> That's it. That's the headline. <laughs> Venus fails to eclipse sun. We'll try again in 100 years. Doc Searles, so nice to talk to you again. Uh, I'd love to get you back more often. Uh, Doc's new book. You know what we, we want to do is set up an, an interview just with you for our triangulation uh, show. Yeah, we're going to try to do that. Because uh, I think it's a very interesting uh, the the uh, the intention economy yep. um, is a really interesting idea, and it's kind of the logical next step after Clue Train. When customers take charge, it's about time. Um, probably one of the best books about uh, what's happening in the digital world and, and the economy uh, on Amazon right now. Thank you. Yeah, yep. thank you so much for being here. With though. with a price that changes daily, there it is. <laughs> is is it? Does it? And depending on what browser you're using, the, the what what are they, what is it? What are you getting for a sixteen dollars and twenty cents? A Kindle yeah. version is twelve ninety nine. Uh, that's okay. So the Kindle uh, price has been all over the map. It's kind of interesting. You use three different browsers. Is that your publisher prices. or is that Amazon? <clears throat> no, no, it's entirely Amazon. It's entirely Amazon. So are they trying? Like, well, let's... I think they were trying something. And actually, the Kindle edition was as much as twenty one bucks for a while. On one of my browsers, yeah. that's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. but now twelve ninety nine is that's is, a good price. That's it. and yeah. that's less than the hardcover. Yeah, not yeah. much, but it's a little less. Yeah, they're selling it for sixteen twenty, which is a good deal. I mean that for yeah, it is. Yeah. But by the way, I'm buying it actually because yeah. I'm run out, <clears throat> and that's it. That's the cheapest place. Cheapest to buy. place to buy. Amazon it. has a monopoly now. I just want you to, you know it's, it's worth saying this. There, there is no it's clear. other bookstore. It's the only one that matters. We know? have I mean, still an independent bookstore in town. And it's like, why even go there? Because they have a few books. I could, there's a great. Barnes and Noble around the like block from where I live. It's fine. I don't know. You're going to pay full price for that book at Barnes and Noble. And, I mean, and they won't that. have everything. I and mean, that's the problem. And, and they always say, well, I get it. We can get it for you in a few days. I said, I can have it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel bad. I want to support the uh, local bookstore. You store. should. I should. Why don't you? I'll just go buy books I don't really want. <laughs> there you go. You should. <laughs> That's the point. Support the authors. Yeah. You got you, the money. Do you have this in a Kindle? <laughs> no. Well, no. <laughs> we can give you the Dead Tree edition. That's it. But I want it in a Kindle. Can you do a Nook? <laughs> Rafe Needleman, uh, you, you know, it's time. You haven't done a Reporters Roundtable in several weeks, and I've been missing it, so uh, get to work. i got some cool ones coming up. Do you? Yeah. So, uh, like, what do you mean? Uh, like, the guests are cool? The topics are cool? Well, hopefully both. That makes for a good show when you have both an interesting topic and a good See, guest. I could learn from huh. you. Yeah, that's the trick. Here we had good guests and nothing to talk about. <laughs> so, that's, so, yeah. But we have four women in the audience. Yes, yeah, that's, that's a, a personal it's, victory. It's a me. it's a new high. It's a new high, and I when I say hi, I mean hi. Uh, and also, of course, on CNET, where you are editor on, at large, News dot com. I'm doing a lot of writing on mobile and Google and startups and stuff. That's a good talk. That's a good beat. That's the best beat. They're fun. Yeah, it's a lot of good, good very stuff. exciting stuff going on. John C. Dvorak is at Channel Dvorak, where he does No Agenda now twice weekly. Yeah, we we went to twice weekly. No Agenda Show dot com twice a week, and uh, it's Thursdays and Sundays. You're doing Thursdays, too, now. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, we started that uh, just recently because of the demand. <laughs> yeah, I demanded it. Yeah. You know, we had Adam on the other day. He was really good. After what everyone says. Yeah, he was very funny. 
Yeah, he can be he can funny. be uh, charming. He whipped out his gun. That was exciting. <laughs> did, did he shoot the gun? No. Uh, next time I have him back, I want him to shoot. Yes. Yeah, because it shoots shotgun. It's a handgun that shoots shotgun. Four ten, I believe. Yeah. Oh, what? The, that's nuts. Well, if you want to kill somebody, it's probably a good idea. Well, you shouldn't use a handgun unless you want to kill somebody. That's what. That's always been my motto. That's my feeling about the matter. <laughs> Uh, we do this show 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time on Sunday afternoons at about 2200 UTC if you're outside of the United States. And we do thank all of you in the European Union for shooting down ACTA. Our president apparently could not do that. Uh, and uh, if you miss the show live, well, you can always tune in uh, after the fact uh, at your convenience by just downloading the audio or video. It's available at twit.tv. Tom Merritt will be back, of course, every Monday through Friday. We have our own daily news hour. Soon moving to 10 a.m., Pacific time. I should give you a warning. That's going to happen July 2nd. Uh, but right now, still 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, but we decided because Buzz Out Loud's gone, that's the old Buzz Out Loud time. We we moved to the Buzz Out Loud times. They're not there. They're not using it. So I didn't know that. They can't. They killed it. I thought they were still doing that show. No. Molly's moved on to something called uh, Always On. Always On. In fact, uh, half our staff went to join her. I'm not bitter. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next time. Another trip is in this the can. Is amazing.